heart of the fan. It is the dream of every high school football in the state of Michigan to play on Thanksgiving weekend at this beautiful stadium, Ford Field. Two teams have reached the Division I state championship. Rochester Adams hasn't been to this type of game in 18 yeah. seasons, and that was at the Silverdome. And it is a year of first for Belleville. First time they have ever played for a football state championship. It comes your way right here on a Saturday afternoon on Valley Sports next. There's an old saying, let the big dogs hunt, let them eat. Well, that is what we have in store for you in Division One. With my partner, Rob Rubick, I'm Matt Shepard. We'll hook up with Brooke Fletcher in a moment. This is what these big guys are all about, man. They want this stage. They got this stage. What do we expect? Oh, I tell you, if, if Rochester Adams has any hope of coming out here with a W today, they're going to have to be strong in the back end. They're going to have to defend because there's a bunch of athletes that get the ball in space, a lot of speed vertically. And I think when you're Belleville, in turn, you got to protect your young quarterback. You have Bryce Underwood, who's a freshman, and they have a guy named Alex DeFrica we're going to talk about in a second. They're going to bring pressure. They're going to bring blitzers. They're going to try to move you off your spot. You're a young quarterback. How do you handle it when someone chases you around the field and makes you throw on the run? You've seen Bryce Underwood a lot this year. What makes you think he can handle this type of he's, moment? Because he's six foot four, 190 pounds, and he's special. He has got an unbelievable arm, a natural thrower of the football. He will show you pocket presence today, Shep, that you just don't see with a lot of seniors, let alone the first freshman in high school. This is a talented kid. By the time it's all said and done, if he's still in the state of Michigan as a quarterback, he's going to be one of the best ones we've seen come out of here in a lot while. But it does help to have a supporting cast, and he's got a dynamic one, doesn't he? Well, everyone's a security blanket. How about blankets? He's got a lot of them. You, you look outside, he's got Deshaun Lee, Jeremiah Caldwell, Tyree Lockett. And on this list here, you can see defensively, there's some guys that bring it to with Alexander and Dyson. They're loaded, Chef, with talent. Now, Talent doesn't always equate to victories. We'll find out, though. It's not a blanket. It's a comforter, for crying out loud. <laughs> Rochester Adams is here. They say, don't forget about us. Too many teams looked past Adams, and they made them pay. What makes them special? De I call him De Freak. This is Alex De Greek, number 79 for for Rochester Adams. And this is what they did. They were able to make that run coming back against West Bloomfield, stopping Tatum, the outstanding running back, defensive back, who's heading to Michigan State. And they also made the comeback victory when they played Grand Blank late in the game. They started out down, but then they just started to roll. They went, I think, a 40 to 0 run after they spotted Grand Blank early 14 points. So this is a team, I don't want to say of destiny, but this is a team that believes. All right, Alex DeGreek is the guy who really makes them go on both sides of the ball. Yeah, 6'5", 240. If you try to run power game at him where you lead people, he will blow it up and make it bubble. If you try to run away and you pull your backside guard and tackle, he will chase it down from behind. And if you want pressure on a quarterback, this is a man who's heading to Harvard, so he's very smart. He will figure out. He's like a raptor. Belleville will have to pinpoint Alex DeGreek on a regular basis if they hope to have some success. Brooke Fletcher is on the sidelines. Hi, Brooke. Hey, guys. Yeah, like you said, Belleville competing for their first state title in school history. Adams competing for their first since 2003. Now, although Adams has history at the finals, someone consider them as the underdog in this matchup as they go up against a very loaded Belleville team would get this over a dozen players with D1 offers. There's a lot at stake here, but before the game, we had a chance to sit down with players from both teams to see what it would mean to take home a state championship title back to their school. I mean, it'd be everything. It's everything we've worked for all summer, put in many hours during the summer, conditioning, double sessions, practices after school. Rochester Adams community has a great bond, former players, coaches, the whole school district. And uh, it would be great for all the seniors who've put in so much effort this year in the last four years. We've been saying that this is the team and that we're special. Oh uh, man, it'd be, it'd be great. The whole community, you know, it being the first championship in school history, our family, friends, they are, you know, look for the crowd. They're going to be out there supporting us. You know, they rule for us. They on our side a lot. They put in a lot of effort and a lot of support. They show a lot of support. So it'll feel good bringing back a state championship to the community. 
Resilience has been Adam's team motto this year, and that's exactly what they've demonstrated this season, especially in the last few weeks in the playoffs, in the semis, in the regionals with those comeback wins. But listen, Coach Petrito and his team, they're not phased. They know they're the underdogs here, but they are going to go out there and prove that they deserve to win the state championship, guys. All right, Brooke, thanks very much. All the eyes in the state of Michigan who follow high school football are watching this one. Rochester Adams, Belleville, they're ready to get it on when we come back on Valley Sports next. voice of Michigan student athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports are supposed to be played. We are responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere so that interscholastic athletes may thrive. We believe athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe students in the stands should have fun, but not take the focus away from the game. We believe coaches should act as teachers. Helping student athletes develop while still keeping high school sports in perspective. We believe that parents should always be positive role models. And be supportive of their child's decisions. We believe officials commit their own time to high school sports. And respect should always be shown and given for that. The most important goal for student athletes is to enjoy high school sports. While keeping a high level of respect between all those involved in the games. Enjoy the game! So should all our IT move to the cloud? The cloud would give us more flexibility, but we lose control. Should I stay or should I go? And we need insights across our data silos, but how? If I go, there will be trouble. <sighs> Wait, we can stay and go. HP GreenLake is the platform that brings the cloud to us. Should I stay or should I go now? There is no glory in practice. But without practice, there is no glory. That's everybody. That's everybody. Now! We ready. So, I don't know what they doing over there, but I know what we doing over here. You ain't got just the football team of Belleville no more. You don't even just have Belleville the team and Belleville the Bay. Belleville the team, Belleville the Bay, Belleville the cheerleaders. No. You got Belleville. We ready now. So let them do whatever they gonna do. Cause we gonna do what we do. Y'all ready to go get this money? All right, then. Hey, All right, then. All right, then. All right, then. I'm ready too. Y'all ready? I'm ready. We roll together. <laughs> Gotta be ready when they take on Rochester Adams. Main Caldwell, Crowell in his seventh season. Four straight regional titles for the first time ever on this huge stage for the head coach, Jermaine Crowell. 71 and 10, Tony Petrito, 19 seasons at the helm in charge of Rochester Adams. A state championship won back at the Silverdome in 2003 and five-time regional champion in search of his 150th career win. What a celebration that would be. Colin Timko will kick it deep for Adams. Belleville with blazing speed and Kevin Sims to Sean Lee. Go, come on! Division one is underway. 
from inside the five on the return. Oh, and good downfield coverage by Adams. Here comes the Belleville offense. Belleville 12 and 1 on the season. We only lost to Churchill in week three, and Bryce Underwood will man the controls. Three touchdown throws in the 40 to 26 win over Stevenson a week ago to get to this point. They started on the ground. Past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And a good run for Colby Reed. That offensive line up front averages 6'2", 261 pounds. A couple of seniors in Watkins and Clark. Jalen Johnson, an absolute stud as a sophomore wide receiver. No gain for the sophomore Reed on his second carry. And here's the Rochester defense up front. Ruse pointed out. Alex DeCreek headed to Harvard. Marco DeCreasy and Tate Pico, the linebackers. Baker Pico, one of the better corners. A completion past the 35 to Jalen Johnson. You see the ability of this, the ability of this Belleville offense. Yeah, they can come out, they can they hit you with a nice run inside. They're going to spread the ball outside. They try to keep you on a yo-yo between the run and pass game. They have ability to do that because of the outstanding freshman quarterback they have. Reed with a stiff arm to get to the outside and then driven down. Good pursuit by Adams' defense. And Nick Patera from the outside linebacker spot got him. Well, this Adams' defense, as we saw when we covered him against West Bloomfield, they can go side to side pretty well. We know there's a lot of speed on the Belleville offense, but this secondary and the linebackers of Adams run well side to side as well. Brings up second down and 10. And Adams jumped. Discipline will be so very important. Offsides. Defense. Five yard penalty. Second down. David Lighton, who's our referee for the Division I championship game. They keep it on the ground. Pulled backwards. Number 24, Griffin Henry makes the stop. He's joined by number 16, Mohamed Murray. There's the entire crew for this Division I championship game. Third, They've had to earn their way here, too. They're among the best at what they do in the state of Michigan. Th third down and three. Oh, Belleville looked like they moved. No flag. Underwood's pass broken up. Knocked down. Is that the big fella to creek or was that almost like a blitz? Marco DeCreasy. One of them got a hand on it. And yeah, they bring pressure on the edge on Belleville. Fourth down and three. I think Jermaine Crowell, you can see from the right side, he's pointing. He jumps up late and is able to knock it down. And Belleville lining up like they're going to get it now. This is a situation we talked about. We did the last game together, Shep. Watch the hard count, that they don't get you on a hard count. 
Jermaine Crowell will roll the dice. He will go for it in a situation like this. He's been known to do so. Butch formation to the left of Underwood. He'll throw for it. Here comes pressure. Unloads downfield. Caught in stride. And touchdown, Belleville. <laughs> Jeremiah Caldwell, 56 yards to the good for the first strike. What a start. You see the pressure, and this just, I'm just got, I've got too much speed. And that's Jeremiah Caldwell getting behind and trying to catch up with J Joey Salo, and he just doesn't have the wheels to play man press against this type of receiver. And what a throw. I talked about Bryce Underwood, Chef. We were observing him doing warm ups a little bit. Just a natural thrower of the football. Freshman Braden Lee on for the extra point, and it is good. Bryce Underwood, when you allow a young man like this to have time in the pocket, he gets it all quick. That's the thing about Brooke, you throw a quick fade to a speedy receiver. There's not enough time for that defensive pressure to get to you. You catch, you set, you throw, and you do this. Wow, that is unbelievable. That is a that is a big time fingertips. I mean, Rosa, get your hands in the ball. All Jeremiah Cowell did was get his fingertips on the football and he's able to pull it in. That's unbelievable execution. Took Belleville just two minutes and five seconds to get on the board. They drive 83 yards in seven plays and strike first. You can understand why Belleville is so openly confident about what they do. I had a chance to do the Adams West Bloomfield game a couple weeks ago. Very similar where Adams had a turnover. Belleville scored quickly with Tatum and they were able to you got down 14 points or 13 points early and they just grind. They find a way to come back. So we'll get our first look at this Adams offense and that leader Parker Pico the quarterback and see what they can do to counter punch. Covered at the 27, and here comes the Adams offense. Parker Pico can hurt you in a couple of different ways. He's thrown for over 1,300, or passed for over 500, and uh, rushed for over 1,300. Leads the team in rushing touchdowns, too, with 19. Now this is a different animal he's going to be facing here today. This front of Belleville. Big, strong, athletic. There's there's not a lot of fat content in this front line. These are these are a lot of 240, 260 pound men that really move laterally well. So it's going to be up to that offense line to create some scenes. Fumble! Pico fell on it. We saw that in our last game we dropped. I don't know if it's early jitters or just the chaos inside. Well, this is called chaos, and it's created, I think, is that Weaver number 50 getting inside and getting pressure, just beating the block. Actually, is that number 60? I had a hard time with that number. And anyways, the defensive tackle belt gets pressure, beats the block, and you get to that mesh point, you can blow up that beer game before it gets going. You're going to get a lot of W's doing that. Remember, Cam Weaver had that pick six against Stevenson last week, turning, and a big hole. All the way past the 40-yard line. That's an answer for Griffin Hinky. This is just a nice job inside, a little trap block. You see the cross, and then a good feel for Hinky as he slides out to the tackle hole when it opens up a little bit. He's able to get to the next level, Chef, move the chains, and that's that's what you want to see. Settle things down. You gave up the big play on defense. Had this offense come out and be the calming force. Hinky now over 900 yards rushing on the season. Big first down for Adams as they try and counter punch what Belleville did on their first possession. Pico holds on to it. Had to gain the yard, pushed backwards, ball came loose, there was no whistle. 
And now there is second down. Now this is this is one of my uh, my pet peeves right now, and I think the state of Michigan needs to look at this. We got to get that whistle quicker. This play was dead. Pico six up there. He's done. That forward momentum. You got eight guys. He's not controlling longer. People are pulling and yanking on him as the ball comes up, and that's when you get someone hurt. When you're not controlling where you're running. If it's you and another guy and you're driving him, that's different. When you get eight guys around you, you're just an afterthought with the ball inside. It becomes a scrum like in rugby. And that, that, I would have blown that pay. I thought it was about a two-yard gain. Instead, it becomes a two-yard loss. Brings up second down and 12. Another counter. Joey Shallow to the 44-yard line. The offensive line averages 6'2", 218. Nick Stoken is a two-year starter. We're looking at a third down and eight. Adams' first test here offensively. They throw the ball okay. I wouldn't call them a pass team. As you saw, just over five, 500 yards throwing the ball yeah. this year. So yeah. they don't throw it a lot. They, they rely on their deception in the run game. Okay. In this situation, and this is the strength of the Belleville team. Their secondary is very good. So... Maybe some type of wing counter here. Keep an eye on both the wings for some type of misdirection. Steps into a throw. Deep pass. Got him! In stride! Big play! Reaching for the touchdown! Brady Prescorn answers the call. Brady's pre-score to your left. He just comes down the seam, makes an outside move. He presses the defender and then just uses speed. And then that big body that's heading to Central Michigan, this sophomore was, was verbally committed to Central Michigan. Six foot six, 215 pounds. You're probably end up playing tight in there. But this is a well-thrown ball also by the, the young man heading to Alabama to play baseball. Uh, that's like throwing a guy out of the plate right there. He threw that about 35 yards. Right on line. Yeah, Park, Parker Pico threw a fastball right down the middle. And what a job. Each team with 56 yard pass plays. We're taking a review here upstairs, just making sure that any pre score stretched out. And we'll get another look here. I, it looked like he did from up here, Shep, that he stretched the ball, and the ball landed on the line. Absolutely. Oh, it's a yeah. touchdown. The ball comes out of his hand once it hits the ground, but then it's a dead ball anyways. That's a touchdown. Yeah, he supermaned it, that's for sure. And he looked like a man of steel just dragging the defender into the end zone, and the extra point is good. So much talked about with Belleville's backfield, but guess what? They climbed over the top, did the Highlanders, and Rochester Adams a scoring drive with one of their own. We're off to a flying start at Ford Field. Tied at seven. Need money for college? You need My Student Aid. My Student Aid is the go-to resource that helps Michigan families find money to pay for college. Plus, they'll guide you through the financial aid process and answer any questions you have. For grants, scholarships, and more, connect with My Student Aid. Helping make college affordable for everyone. Learn more at michigan.gov slash mi student aid. In life, things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. What matters is what you have in here as a man. We've worked all year for this freaking moment. All year of training. All year of getting ready. All year of being selfless. All year of being cold, hurt. And not one time have you looked back. Not one time have you not demonstrated yourself. Don't let anything else 
loss effect you're locking in. No matter what happens in this game for the next 48 minutes, as a man, I believe in you and I love you. I know you will control your own destiny. You gotta lock in, take a deep breath, and lock into these white lines and your brothers kneeling next to you. You are so blessed to have this time together. We are blessed to share it with you. And tell you what, we've been talking about being hungry all year. This is the last supper, and I'm starving. Let's go to Go. He's made me hungry. How about you? I'm always hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Coach P got him going there. You know, we saw Coach uh, Jermaine Crowell's speech, too, and he got you revved up, and then you see the other side before the game, and that's why these guys, one of, one of the reasons their ability to get these teams here is they keep them highly motivated and on task. What did Brooke Fletcher tell us before our broadcast? The motto for Rochester Adams, resilience. They had a different model. The seniors had a different model. And Tony Petrito, who's an emotional guy, had his team watch the Steve Gleason feature. Remember, he played for the Saints. He blocked the kick. And then he dealt with ALS. Well, the team watched it, and they changed it to resilience. It impacted him that much. No kick it away. Returnable. into the outside good speed heck of a return a job well done there by Rashad Wilson when you can run like this chef it makes this game really easy he's gonna come right here he's gonna zip all the way across look at him usually you tell you guys north to south north to south but wait a minute I'll dip in now I'll get outside because I'm really really fast I'm gonna get up the sidelines a good job of stair stepping. A little bit north, a little bit to the east, a little bit north, a little east. Wilson sets up his offense at the 41 yard line. <laughs> Underwood with a strong start. Two for three, 66 yards and a score. Colby Reed. Busy early on, already his fifth carry. There's Belleville's road to the finals. Low scoring affair against Fordson and Ann Arbor Huron, but other than that, their offense on full display. Got some help from Stevenson with some turnovers last week. Gain of two there. Third down and three for Belleville. Well, this is four down territory for Coach Jermaine Crowell. We saw in the last series, he was actually a little bit farther than this when he went for it. And they threw the, was that fourth down and two, Shep, where they threw the goal on the touchdown? I think it was. I think that was a fourth and two play. On the ground, they stuffed the run. Tate Pico was there as soon as the ball carrier touched the football. Jeremiah Beasley stuffed in the backfield. Pico over a hundred tackles on the season, a big one there. You know, his brother Parker gets a lot of the love because he's the quarterback safety. But watch this run through. This is a predetermined run through blitz. Everyone thinks you blitz and passing down. You can run blitz just as well. And that's what that was. He got into a gap, got penetration now. Fourth down and two again. Flashback, touchdown, Jeremiah Caldwell. Last time, they threw the goal route against him. A little bit more cushion up top. We see it right up here. Here's the matchup that was exploited last time when he got behind Joey Shallow. Empty set for Underwood. And a flag on the play, and that's delay a game. Delay a game, offense number 19. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Yeah. This is a situation where you have play clocks, but a lot of these schools don't have play clocks, play clocks during the course of the year, and they're not used to looking up and seeing it. Obviously, Bryce Underwood, if he knew that, he might have tried to speed, sped things up a little bit, and he couldn't do it. And now, I, I gotta believe if you're Coach Crowell, you're gonna punt the ball here. It's fourth and seven on your own 43-yard line, but I've been wrong more than once today. They're trying to reset the play clock. 
but first a timeout. Timeout for Jermaine Crowell and Belleville. They scored on their first possession. They watched Adams do the same, and now a key fourth and eight when we return. Your hometown sports network, Valley Sports Detroit, the heart of the fan. Some kids worship superheroes growing up, but I worship the Pistons. Isaiah, Lambeer, John Sally, Vinnie Johnson, James. Ed Place your legal sports bets at BetRivers.com. Your new home for tennis betting. The most tennis betting options on the matches you love. We offer live in-match betting on major tennis events worldwide. We have tons of bets available during matches from money lines, game spreads, set spreads, point by point bets, and many more. BetRivers.com offers live streaming of matches worldwide. That's right. You can bet on the match as you're watching. Sign up now and we'll match your first deposit up to $250. More bets, more action, more fun. Place your sports bets at BetRivers.com. GoldenNuggetCasino.com is giving away up to $1 million in prizes this month, including a chance to win our first place prize of $100,000 in free play bonus. Sign up now and earn points by playing your favorite slot and table games, including Cleopatra, Five Card Poker, and Blackjack. The more you play, the more chances to win. It's all a part of our $5 million golden race. Don't miss your chance to win a share of the prize. Sign up now and we'll match your first deposit up to $1,000 plus 200 free spins. Only at GoldenNuggetCasino.com. In the country, in his class. And I thought it when, when I knew, knew, I knew his dad. I coached his dad at Kettering High School. And I told him, I'm like, man, I think your son is going to be super super special and i don't think people understand i like me but understand something if he goes and does what i think he's gonna do you better get ready <laughs> yeah bryce underwood has made quite the impression this season and with the win today he will become the second freshman quarterback in division one to get his team a state title now the first guy to do it was jay rue campbell for cast tech back in 2011 a name you guys know matt yeah, Underwood doesn't play like a freshman, and neither did J. Rue Campbell, who had went on to go on and win the Harlan Hill Trophy as a quarterback at Ferris State. And uh, you can understand why there is so much fanfare about Bryce Underwood. But he won't get a chance on fourth and long here. Elbow's going to punt it away. Rugby style and a short one shanked out of bounds right around the 40 yard line of Adams. They mark it at the 45 good field position for Rochester Adams. How do they win the state championship game Rob Rubin. Well what you got to do you talk about Parker Pico they're going to lean on him heavy. They got to be able to move him in the, the midline veer game. He's got to make good decisions. You already saw early. He did it with his arm with a huge pass downfield. And then it's on defense. It's simple. It's got to be Alex the Greek, better known to me as the freak, because what he does sometimes is freakish. He made plays in that West Bloomfield game, Shep, where while you watch the film, were just incredible. Peekaboo and freak show. But you love to get creative with the English language, don't you? A little play on words and a couple of yards. Along the right side for Griffin Hinky. Second down and seven for Rochester Adams out of the OAA White Division. First unbeaten season for the Highlanders. And their first ever game against Belleville. Two by two in this setup. Pico keeps it, and he's wrestled down. What about Belleville, Rob Rubick? How do they steal the limelight? Well, you know, when you look at Belleville, they got to take care of that quarterback. We talk about boys to men. You got a freshman quarterback, but we're seeing him grow up right in front of our eyes here, already with a huge touchdown pass. And when I say, Chef, one dimensional, they have to make them throw the football take the run game away commit seven eight people in the box don't let that veer option get you and start moving the ball and pack man it on you make them throw the ball they're not comfortable doing it but obviously you saw early on they can if pushed when you went boys to men i just want to make sure you weren't going to start singing that's all here's a third down play for rochester adam pico still has it has a scene broke a tackle and a first down run by the rochester adams quarterback 
don't underestimate the speed of Parker Pico. He's a Division I baseball player. You don't do that without having good wheels. And you see, nice job at the point of attack, kick out blocks. And Tate, Tate, his brother, gets a couple blocks. And then Parker does a good job of just following. That's just a quarterback power outside. It's one of the many different types of runs they're going to run with Parker Pico throughout the game. And he picked up 15, moved it to the 35 of Belleville as we approach the three-minute mark of the opening quarter. Still has it. Yeah, he pulled that at the very last moment and actually got some positive yards out of it. I, tell, I said early on, Chef, watch this. Watch the measure. Get ready and pause it. Right there. He's already got the ball out. You see Henke just being drilled. Parker pulls it late, and there's nothing there. Good penetration. You're going to defend the beer. You coach it all week. Let's get inside. They're going to option you. They're going to read you. But when you get that back, the quicker you can get to it, the tougher it is for the quarterback to pull it and run the second part of the midline veer. It's a really good feel by the quarterback, huh? You have to feel that, not just look it. He'll keep it again. And that hole closed quickly down at the 32-yard line. Wrapped up by Jeremiah Beasley. How did Rochester Adams get here? Well, they beat Grand Blank last weekend by 20. The West Bloomfield win was a little bit of a surprise for many, but not for Adams. They beat the Lakers by one. Yeah, that West Bloomfield, let's not forget, they were down 13-0 in the game at halftime and just really controlled and dominated the second half. It is third down and six for Rochester Adams. Pico still has it. Lowers the shoulder, crawls to the 31. He lost a yard. It'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, it, yeah I, you know, this is a tough situation for Tony Petrito. Now you're at a fourth down and five. You say, we're on the plus side of 50, but I don't think they're really in field goal range. And this is just good defense. And look at, that's Weaver once again, who made a play early on. We talked about him getting penetration, getting in there. This West, or the, rather West Bloomfield, this Belleville front is very good, Shep. They're physically strong, but they go side to side. They do great jobs with their hands, with leverage, and keeping separation so they can shed blockers. Going for it on fourth and six. Pico will throw. Down the middle of the field. Perfect flight, perfect throw, and a touchdown to Christian Schomer. Parker Pico has been called on to run the ball a lot this year. He shows that he can also throw the ball. Let's watch right here in the slot. Number three, Schomer looking, gives him a little outside, back to the inside. That's great. He did it with quickness. He didn't lose vertical speed, and that's why he got separation. And in coverage, you, you look at Mikhail Yarbrough, Yarbrough rather, Yarbrough does a good job recovering, but it's just a perfect pass. Great concentration on the part of Schomer as well. Tony Petrito told us this week, if you want a big play from our wideouts, you throw it toward number three, and he'll come down with it. He did just that to give his team the lead. We talk about Parker Pico coming into this game, his running ability in the Veer game, and now he's only thrown for 500 yards. But these are two perfect balls, and this one they're taking a look at to make sure it's possessed. Knee is down. He might be short, but they're going to say, no, nope, close enough with the angle they had, so... Here's the conversion. The extra point is good. Rochester Adams has possessed the ball twice, scored two touchdowns, both of them through the air. If you're just joining us, Rochester Adams watched Belleville score quickly. After just seven plays, they drove 83 yards, and it was Pater, a beautiful throw from Bryce Underwood to Jeremiah Caldwell. Rochester Adams made sure everybody reminded them, hey, listen, we're here too. We're here to win. And they went deep on a touchdown pass from Parker Pico. And after forcing a punt on a third and long, they did it again. Right down the middle on post routes. And they've got the lead. 
Well, a really nice job with your, your, your little highlight pack there, Chef. Great job, by the way. But more was the route running by Schomer and Priestcorn. They're able to get separation, which gives your quarterback somewhere to put the ball. And if you don't run a good route, if you just kind of lollygag down there, and you, there's nowhere for the quarterback to put the ball. And this time, when you have a quarterback that's more of a running guy like Pico is, you give him some confidence in the passing game, and you make his job easy. And the balance that Rochester Adams has been able to display early on through the air and on the ground, so important, will be vital for both these teams. On the return, Wilson. Flag on the play. Breaking free. One man to beat. He's got the block. Stumbling his way. Enough in the tank. No. He windmills his way down at the 12. But there is a flag. During the return, holding on the receiving team, number nine. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Might have cramped up, too. Well, let's take a look to the right side of the screen. Right coming in, you see number nine. Mm. It could be it, Shep. You know, that's what I thought. Oh, it's really hard. I mean, we, we're limited in how many guys we have in the screen. But, you know, this this is going to take away from an excellent return. Oh, well, Cameron Moore might, might have spun Wilson. him around. Might have spun him around. Maybe that's why the call. Demarcus Rouse was spun around for a moment. But how about the return from Rashad Wilson? He's up and able to get himself off the field. That's great news for Belleville and... Good news for football fans who just want to see exciting players. Belleville deep in their own end, though. Underwood to the air. And through the outstretched arms of Kevin Sims. Four-man route for Underwood. Slings one and off the fingertips. An incomplete Jalen Johnson, the intended receiver. It'll bring up third and ten. Real quick here, the thing you have to understand when you're a young quarterback is the easier balls are those deep ones that you can just lay out there. These timing routes are a little bit more difficult. But you can see Jalen Johnson, he's curling in. The quarterback's throwing it like he's just going to sit down. And that could be a communication thing or just an air and throw. But now what it does, Shep, it sets up a third and ten deep in your own territory. You have to be careful. If you're Jermaine Crowell, you tell your young quarterback, you better see a lot of green behind your receiver. 0 for 2 on third downs early. Pressure comes. He'll scamper up the middle. He's got the first down and more. And driven out of bounds at the 21-yard line. That's a good decision and a really good run by the freshman. One of the most difficult things for any quarterback is to develop that, that clock in your head in the pocket. Yeah. And we saw this against West, or rather against Sterling Heights Stevenson. He already has that. He feels the pressure. He takes off at the perfect time. He gives the play a chance to develop, and then he re realizes, okay, they're run off. I'm going to take off and go. It does a nice job. Can you teach that? You can, you can preach it, repetition can create it, but it's tough. A lot of guys just naturally have it. That's it for the first quarter. Rochester Adams has the seven point lead. They were down seven, nothing early, and then have bounced back with back-to-back -back touchdown passes from their quarterback, Parker Pico. Hasn't got as much fanfare, but he's delivered early in the Division I state championship game. Tomorrow on Valley Sports Detroit, all the guts, all the glory, and all the stars. The Legacy Senior All-Star Game, tomorrow at noon on Valley Sports Detroit, powered by Meyer and Dick Sporting Goods. I've won most of the biggest cases in this state, and because of that, people think I'm out of reach for them.
But the fact is that Figer Law takes on all kinds of cases, big and small. No one else tries more auto cases than us. We get results and no one pays until we win. Figer Law. I was born for this. I was born for this. I was born for this. It's here, the Menards Black Friday Sale. Hurry in for best selection. Price is good through December 5th. These Mucklux ladies' boots are warm and comfortable and come in a variety of styles. They're only $19.99 each. Stock up on toys for the little ones. Assorted Barbie dolls are just $2.99 each. Check out these and more amazing Black Friday deals at Menards. Available in-store only while supplies last. Save big money at Menards. We're a tough town, and nothing, I mean nothing, can slow us down. Now more than ever, it's important to support our local businesses, our neighbors, and our friends and family. We are all connected by this beautiful community. We love this town. Atchison Ford, Belleville. It's a whole new season and a whole new Lions game plan, packed with insights and interviews you just won't find anywhere else. So catch Lions game plan and get fired up. Lions game plan on Bally Sports Detroit. Welcome back to Ford Field. Now, I'm not sure if you guys know this, but Rochester Adams has a pretty impressive list of alumni. Starting with Jacob Truba. Yeah, seven-year NHL vet, currently plays for the New York Yangers, graduated back in 2012. Peter Vanderkay, class of 2002, Team USA Olympic gold medalist for swimming. And then let's go to the entertainment industry. Tommy Kluftus drummer for the band Black Sabbath, and then the material girl herself, class of 1976, Madonna. The best for last, you guys. <laughs> Rock and rollers would strongly disagree with you there, Brooke Fletcher. <laughs> Black Sabbath drummer, it doesn't get a lot better than that, but that's, that's quite uh, an established alumni list. Jacob Truba, who played at the University of Michigan, played for Winnipeg, now with the Rangers. Many people in Detroit wish he wore a red wing wing wheel on his sweater. But good stuff there, and four big names. Here comes the second quarter. Rochester Adams up 14-7. And Bryce Underwood and Belleville on a first and 10. Quick throw to the flat. Get the ball in the hands of your playmakers and let them go. Kevin Sims with a nice game. Get the ball, get it out quickly. The quicker you can do it offensively, it gives Sims some room to do something with it. The defense, you have to recognize it. You're going to see that quick game really come up and try to pressure it, get him before you can get going. Second and short. He'll throw. Pressure comes. He gets away from DeCree. Flipping his way the other way on the opposite side, and he's got some room. What a run by Bryce Underwood, close to midfield. Well, this is something right now that you don't see often. Bryce Underwood is able to make Alex the Greek miss in space. We saw him engulf the West Bloomfield quarterback a couple weeks ago. And now watch this. Comes in, he has the shot, steps up, gets under. And then it's just, this is just all natural ability. Running back, going against the flow of the defense. It's all coming at you. Getting away from trouble and really turning something big in what could have been a negative TFL. Ran about 60 to gain 18. Spectacular run by Underwood. Now he'll let his running back do it this time. And it's Jeremiah Beasley for a tough yard or two. What do you like most about Bryce Underwood? Because I thought that throw in the flat was pretty impressive. On a quick well, throw. you know, you're asking. <laughs> that's a tough question. There's a lot of things I like, and that's why Jermaine Crowell said he's going to be one of the great quarterbacks in his senior class. I, I believe it too. I've never seen a freshman quarterback that type of poise, that type of natural ability. We saw he can run, he can throw the ball with touch, he can throw the ball with zip. He's just his future is so bright. Second down and nine. Short arm that one. Oftentimes people think those are easy throws to the flat, but when you have to deliver it quickly. That's what made me kind of ask the question about yeah. Underwood and his and, ability. And that's a timing throw. And that's a difficult task for a freshman to come out here and have that type of confidence, not only in your arm, but in the receiver that he'll be there 
It, he does. No, he's going to miss some throws. He's a freshman. All quarterbacks, I don't care what grade yeah. you are, you're going to miss some throws. But he's also going to make you say, wow, a lot during the course of the day. Already has today, third down and nine. Adam shows blitz. They come with it. Underwood dancing his way free and then gets to the 49-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down. Tanner Buck came up. A nice job to control him. When the pocket collapses now, once again, it, it's tough. And that's what you do with a quarterback that can move, collapse the pocket evenly, have other guys coming. So in the first play where the Greek misses him, there's no one else su supporting. That time there's two or three other yellow jerseys. Now it's fourth down again and 10. I don't know if they have the pooch punt in their arsenal. Once again, last time it was fourth down and eight, Coach Crowell took a timeout, and we're going to see the same thing here to discuss it. It's a big play for his team here in the first half. They're down by seven. What will he do on fourth and nine? We'll soon find out on Valley Sports after this. Your hometown sports network, Valley Sports Detroit, the heart of the fan. This fall on Valley Sports Detroit. Nighttime is prime time for football Fridays. Across Michigan, Friday nights are bringing communities, rivalries, homecomings, passion, pride, and tradition together again. Because it's high school football. And they've got some room. And it is on. This fall, football Fridays are on Valley Sports Detroit. There is no glory in practice. But without practice, there is no glory. I don't know if we're going to win or lose this game, but I do know now we got a program. So a program is something that continuously keeps getting stronger and stronger. And we was already kind of tough. So <laughs> better jump on us now. <laughs> tap, tap, tap. Better jump on us now. <laughs> tap, tap, tap. You better jump on us now. Tap, tap, tap. Yeah, if you guys don't know, that has been the motto for this Belleville team throughout the season. We covered their game just a few weeks ago. I mean, and this has really carried on. They had this on their banner. They had the whole crowd, the cheerleaders, they were all chanting, tap, tap, tap. It means tap out, if you guys don't know. But uh, it's kind of catchy. What do you guys think? I tapped out at the Thanksgiving dinner table the other night. <laughs> That's about as close as I can come. They I took the time out. They're going to fake the punt. Right side, it's not going to work. Well, here's the issue when you're trying to run a fake punt near midfield. Every defense that's coached at all is going to play punt safe. They're not going to try to block it. They're just playing defense. They're playing like you're going to run the football. As you can see, there's three. We'll get another look at this possibly. There's three Rochester Adams linebackers. I'm going to show you here. Pause it. Pause it. Look at this. I mean, you got a, you got a great flow. A great flow flowing and getting to the ball. There's no word to go. I mean, that's just sound defense being well coached. Fifty-one yards to the end zone now for Rochester Adams, who leads by seven. Parker Pico has had a nice half already. A counter, spinning his way into Belleville territory goes Christian Schomer. You see Adams right now, Ship kind of testing the waters. We saw him go inside early with the midline with Parker Pico running it inside. Now that time they run the counter, get to the edge. And once you get someone going in this type of offense, it's a lot of fun calling plays because you can kind of get them on a yo-yo. You hit them in, you hit them out, you hit them. Now all of a sudden you throw a pass on the field. They're all coming up trying to stop the run. So if this offense is gaining yards, it's very tough to defend. Yeah, those belly counters, those veers are really tough to defend. You got to be disciplined. Pico broke a tackle, slips his way, and now backs his way close to a first down. 
Well, that was third and short. I got to believe that in this situation, Tony Petrito, they're going to be uh, maybe a foot and a half short that he's going to go for it. I'm sorry, that was second. Now it's going to be third and short. Look for him something inside, maybe the midline where he'll ride the back up the middle, Shep, then he'll just get on behind him and try to pick up the first down. Tate Pico has come in, and he's one of those guys yeah. who likes to plow forward to kind of pave the way. He's right behind his brother. It's going to be a quarterback sneak for a first down inside the 40 to the 39. Pico on the keeper. It'll be first and 10, down to Brooke Fletcher. Brooke? Yeah, guys, Alex DeGreek is on the sidelines getting his left ankle taped, but um, obviously you know how important he is to this offense and this defense. It looks like he's gonna go back out, but you know, they need him quickly because he's a huge impact player. Yeah, they need him on offense and defense. The right tackle and the disruptive defensive end. Muhammad Murray is in for him at right tackle. They went to the left side and Gained a couple. The creek is now up after Brooke had mentioned getting his ankle taped and Rochester Adams hoping he's good to go. Second down and eight. Parker Pico. Breaking tackles. Oh, he's a tough runner, isn't he? His brother Tate Pico kind of leading the way and a good block to give him four. This play's getting close. That's your quarterback power. We're going to pause it right here in the beginning. Let me, I'm going to show you. They're bringing the student body right kind of. You're going to see all everyone getting outside here, trying to get the edge. Let it go. And watch how close it is. They seal, they seal, they kick out. They just get beat inside. If, if, if number 29 that time, Devin Williams does get a hand on the spin, of, he might get through that crease. So they're getting closer. What better, what better execution? So you think they'll continue to run that because it's getting close. Four wide receivers set, and Adams moved. That's, that's the 50-50 when you're an offense coordinator head coach. Offense number 52. Five-yard penalty, still third down. You have third down and four or five, and you go with the hard count, but your guys have to hold their water too, Shep. And that time, Adams jumps the right side of their line, so instead of being a, a third down and four, now you're a third down and nine, and changes everything. But if you get any positive yardage here, you're going for it on fourth down anyway, aren't you? 100%, you're third and nine. Now, Prescorn is their number one receiver. But Cyborg, he's also a weapon. You have Schomer, we've seen what he can do. And DeCreek is back in at the right tackle. Which is perfect timing because you're in a pass type situation here. He'll throw for it. Rolling and a clear path. First down and more. Oh, look at him lower the shoulder. He went shoulder to shoulder with Jeremiah Caldwell and got the better of it to move the chains. We talked about the clock in Bryce Underwood's head while Parker Pico has his own because he takes off at the perfect time. Pressure comes inside and he shows that he's got speed. People understand that he can really, really run. And right here being chased by Weaver has no shot of getting him. Now I know what he's thinking here, Shep, is I'm gonna hurdle him. You better not because in high school, that's a penalty. Cannot hurdle people in high school. Nope, it is a personal foul penalty. And he's a tough dude right there. Big gainer on a third and long. And now Rochester Adams wants a timeout. Parker Pico has done it with his arm and a couple of touchdown passes. And on that third and long, used his legs to keep the drive alive. So, I got my start in officiating when a friend told me I should try it. At first, I just did basketball, and I got hooked. Before long, I added baseball, softball, football, and volleyball. I really enjoyed giving back to the game, working with kids, and working with my local association to recruit and train new officials. I would like to say to anybody that officiating is a great way to help kids and stay connected to the game. We always need new officials. There's help wanted, just listen. 
a team of world-renowned specialists who plan the most comprehensive course of cancer treatment. Technology so advanced, it delivers the greatest precision in the world. Access to the most promising life-saving clinical trials and a team of nurse navigators who are by your side through every step of treatment, tailored to your needs. Only at the Sparrow Herbert Herman Cancer Center. For health, for care, for life. A lot of coaches will shy away from what you've done. I covered your game, was it 03 when you had uh, Alan Guy? Yeah. yeah. And now he had a great number, 37. He was a quarterback. He was a Mike linebacker and quarterback. You're doing it again. You got Parker Pico, yeah. your quarterback, and he plays safety. It doesn't bother you? It doesn't worry you? No, because how our style of offense, we're going to be physical anyway with our quarterback. So he's got to be a football player, and we're going to play our best 11 on both sides of the ball. Um, and we love getting our best guys out there, and you win and lose with defense, by the way. So if he's one of our best 11, he's going to play D. And, uh, you know, we saw this at yesterday as well with Josh Burton from Traverse City Central, who played both ways. And, you know, Coach Petrito, he feels that I want to get my best people on the field, and we're not going to try to detect anyone. You're going to play football. You're going to be physical. If you happen to be the quarterback, so be it. He's got his team first and 10 inside the Belleville 15. To his brother and the handoff for Tate Pico. Back to the line of scrimmage. Remember, Belleville was down to Stevenson a week ago in the semis, and they came back. Stevenson helped them a little bit, but we had it on our air here on Bally Sports, and Belleville hung right in there and ended up winning that ball game rather comfortably, 40 to 26. Well, this Belleville linebacking court with Charles Wilson, Aaron Alexander, Cameron Dyson, they're very active. Now you're just showing blitz. Look them all walk up. You got eight in the box. Double tight end set. And a good job to stop Griffin Inky for no game. That was Deshaun Green. Well, they're challenging you right now. Coach Crow says enough is enough. I'm going to bring a bunch of people up inside. We're going to fill every gap. You're not going to have enough yellow jerseys to block us. And that's a really nice job getting penetration. Let's see if he does it again now. He can man up outside if he wants to. Nice play please. of the drive coming here, Rubes. I like this. I like that matchup. How they bring him back in tight, though. Parker Pico to the 10 and then driven backwards. Interesting call. You know, I that might just be uh, we're up seven and we can make it 10 here. We can make it a two possession game with a field goal, a lot of confidence in the, in the kicking game. Colin Timko has converted five field goals on the year. His season long is 37. And this will be a 27-yard field goal attempt. Remember, high school is different than the pros. I mean, look how wide the yeah. angle is going to be here. You just have to make sure you align yourself. You're still kicking it straight. You're just twisting it before you kick it. Out of the hole of Nick Patera. Luke Stokoski with the long snap. And the kick is up and good. Rochester Adams, he kind of curled his way in there. If you're on the golf course, it might be a, a, a little bit of a hook. For me, oftentimes it's a slice, but whatever, it works. <laughs> Adams scores yet again, and they increase their lead to 10. Well, this uh, this curved. I mean, it looked like it was going wide right, and it just turned and came in, and we talk about kicking from the far right. You can see how sharp it is. That's pretty nice, Shep, huh? Really nice. Tiger signed someone like that break the ball like that well they just they did might. Eduardo Rodriguez if you want to get into it we can talk about it but we don't have to um it's it's a really nice job by Adams to sustain a drive get some key third downs mix it up a little bit and as you always say if every drive ends in a kick you're doing it's something not right. a bad thing yeah. that could be a punt you haven't yeah. turned the ball over but Tony Petrito right there he was playing I think he's playing the odds a little bit saying there's only 320 left in the half. We can go in with a two-possession lead. Let's not get greedy. A lot of coaches, that's tempting to try to throw the ball up. You don't get the sack. You don't get a turnover. And you uh, have to take advantage of your opportunity. And now it's going to see if Melville can take advantage of your opportunity, Shep, and to get the ball back here with 320. It, it also says something about how he feels about how his defense has performed so far in this first half. 
Yeah, he's got a lot of confidence right now. I mean, really, if you think about it, it's the one big play that yeah. the big strike to Caldwell that hurt him. A little pooch kick. That's alive and out of bounds. When you get down there quicker. That that kind of fooled Belleville a little bit. They were close. Max Sabor was close to being all over that and getting it back for Adams. Instead, it will be Belleville possession at about the 36-yard line in their own territory and 319 remaining in the half. Hey, Tony Petrito has been around long enough to realize that last when he kicked to Wilson and he returned for a touchdown. We're going to take care of that. We're going to take him out of the game. We're not going to let him be an option. We're going to kick it. We're going to pooch it. Worst case scenario, it goes out of bounds. Right. We get penalized. They start on the 35 instead of in our end zone. He did take a deep breath because that was a penalty on Belleville and negated that long return, but he showed him Wilson did just how dangerous he can be on the kickoff returns. Bryce Underwood always dangerous. Last week, 155 yards, three touchdowns in the win over Stevenson. He's got a TD throw here early on, but his team has been nullified the last couple of possessions. He will go to the air, down the right sideline, and it is caught in stride, and a beautiful throw, touchdown Belleville. Quick strike capability. Well, we talk about the different things you like. Looks to your left, come back to your right. You got single coverage on the weak side, and that is beautiful. And Jeremiah Caldwell just showing that you cannot cover me. When I go deep, you're in trouble. If you have no safety help over the top, and you can see Schomer trying to run with him. Ooh, I think he got away with one there, Shep. Yeah, he extended the arm, and, and that really had an impact on the play. There's no question. And, you know, as I always talk about the officials, just like players, players drop balls, officials miss calls. It happens. Obviously, if he saw that, he would have called it. And uh, it ends up being a big play for Belleville. Call, I like that. I like that savvy, though. Pushing off. Get the edge, whatever it takes, Shep. You know, it's all about the dub. It was a 64-yard strike from Bryce Underwood to Jeremiah Caldwell. The second time that these two have connected here on this championship Saturday, and they get their club to within three. Let's take one more look at this. Jeremiah Caldwell. Now, here's the thing about Jeremiah is he doesn't need to push out with it. The way he can run, but you can see he creates separation, an unnatural separation that the play was unfolding shouldn't have happened. But he's able to get that room. But how about the throw, though? Oh, beautiful. Uh, oh, Absolutely uh, he just, beautiful. Now, I always say I think the deep ball for a young quarterback is still the easiest ball to throw because your receiver can adjust to it in his pattern. They all look maybe better than they are. But he's also proved he can show, throw the quick stuff outside. Well, that was not a floater either. I mean, that was a perfectly thrown football. But how about he looked left first? Is that pretty? Yeah. I mean, he looks left. And then he comes back to the right, and that moves the safety. The safety can't get over the top to help. Yeah, he can play. There's no doubt about it. We've seen him run. We've seen him throw. We've seen him dazzle all day long so far. But his team down 17-14 with 3-10 left to go in this opening half. I see what this Highlander, this Adam Highlander offense can do with the short clock here before halftime. It, it will be interesting. We talk about adjustments all the time. It'll be interesting what Rochester Adams does to try and slow him down. No more man-to-man, -man, perhaps. Returnable to the 35 for Joey Shallow. Yeah, you know, we talked earlier about how Stevenson, Coach, Coach uh, Newman said, we're going to go, if they have trips, we're going four to that side. If they have a single receiver, they being Belleville, we're going to cover two over the top of that. You see Adams really trying to play a man-to-man -man with a high free safety, not having a lot of success. In the run game now, they have, because you can put more people in the box, but they're paying for it in the passing game. Rochester Adams does have a couple of timeouts. They would like this clock to go quickly. They will get the ball to start the second half. But so much depends on your first downs in these types of situations. You, you don't see this much for Adams. You have two receivers high to the top, one split here to the bottom. Six-man box, though. And that's why they run it. And explain that six-man box. You got four guys up front. Explain it why well, you might want to run against it. Because you have you number wise, you have enough offensive linemen with your running back to get a helmet on a helmet. That's all anytime you can do. If you get a helmet on a helmet, you have an opportunity for a big play inside. 
But they also, when you're a talented back in secondary like they have, you can man up outside and you can allow that safety to come down and sneak to bring the seventh one in the box as well. You see right here, Shep. Now you see how they got the set. This is the seventh guy kind of cheating in the box. Off play action. Pico. Home run ball. Wide open. And he overthrew him. Christian Schomer. No one was within 15 yards of him. Oh, Parker Pico just got to say, give me that one back. Schomer's going to come from the right. They do the play action. Nice movement. He just goes, and that's a blown coverage. He didn't beat anyone. He That's just a blown coverage by... Belleville, where they're bringing her safety. He's coming up and run support on the ball fake, on the play action, and he gets frozen, and that allows Schomer just to run by him. They just could not execute it. Adams four for six on third down so far this afternoon. Well defended. Belleville with one timeout remaining, you wonder if Coach Grove, I would take it here and save yourself 30 or 40 seconds. Jay Sean Green has really stepped forward. Heck of a play there. Well, this is just pressure inside, and this young man, we talked about Sean Green when we were doing the game a couple weeks ago. He is a difference maker inside. He is still, you look at the build on him, Chef, 6'1", 260. But you watch how nimble, how he can move side to side. That's why we list him as one of our impact players, and that's why he has not let us down. He's got four tackles, and for that size, you're right. He moves sideline to sideline very well. Stay with us at the half. We've got an exclusive interview with director of the MHSAA, Mark Yule, to discuss the playoff format, the point system, and a whole lot more. That's coming up next. Plus, Brooke Fletcher will talk with both coaches and get some insight on how they feel about the first half of play here in Division One. Division Five is coming up. Marine City against Grand Rapids, Catholic Central, and then, of course, the nightcap Division Two with DeWitt against Martin Luther King, or three, rather. Some people think that might be the best game of the weekend with King and DeWitt. Well, this one's been pretty good. And I'm going to say I'll take ours right now, the one we have. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this, if you love offenses, if you love offenses, Chelsea and Hudsonville Unity Christian last night was unbelievable. Oh, I went to bed, it was a 28-point spread. <laughs> I missed it. You missed yeah, out. Oh, I'm that guy. Oh, yeah. you should have seen that. Oh, no, I was sleeping. <laughs> no, you're supposed to lie and just say, yeah, it was something special, wasn't it? And then get all the facts afterwards. Line drive kick. It takes an Adams bounce. They'll let it wobble down to the 10 yard line. And that's a job well done by the Rochester Adams punt team. A 50 yard punt and a net of 50. Let's think really ahead here. Let's be proactive in our thinking process. If you're Tony Petrito, you're thinking right now, okay, they're on their own 10 yard line. We have a chance if we get a three and out here to get the ball back with time. Adams to us, two timeouts. The success that Belleville's had has been throwing the football. If they come out and throw an incomplete pass or two, you're going to start using your timeouts to try to get good field position and maybe have one more shot. But the first thing you got to do is get some stops. Now let's see if they have any more help. Now you're, you're, seeing, you're seeing just three over here. Well, actually four over three. And you might have these two over one here. So this is what we saw with Stevenson trying to defend this high-powered offense. Get a little bit more, but that leaves you light in the middle with only five in the box. Colby Reed to the left hip of Bryce Underwood, who will throw. Against a four-man rush, low throw, but a nice grab made by Deshaun Lee. They picked up eight, it's second and short. How interesting is Alex DeGreek, their best pass rusher, not in the game. And this is right here. This is what I'm talking about. Only five people in the box here. Injured his ankle earlier in the ball game. Underwood, another out pattern. Same result, a first down to Deshaun Lee. How about that throw? That had some zip on it. And now you change stopper. I said early on, you're always thinking of what could happen. Now your process changes a little bit. You think, okay, now we're defensive. We got to get a stop and get out here because they're starting to move the ball, establishing field position. It's 
steps into another one. Wide open, middle of the field. Man to man miss. Still on his feet. Shaking his way. Caldwell to the end zone. His third of the day. Belleville with the lead. Take advantage of your effort. Okay, let's pause it right here. All they're gonna, we're gonna see here in a second, Shep, when we get the all 22 look here, they're gonna just run a crossing route. They're gonna go out, and they're just gonna come in, but all three of the defenders go out. Let it go. They do a crossing route, everyone goes out, no one comes in. It's like taking candy from a baby. And let it go here, and then it's just athleticism. This is why he's a power five player. Jeremiah Caldwell, he's getting so many offers from around the country. There it is, this is a great look. See, they all three go to one. They leave them wide open. The difference is, in this game, the score right now, Belleville takes advantage of a blown coverage. Rochester missed it. They had the opportunity in the last series to score, Shep, they don't get it. Extra point is good, and it has been quite a show. Bryce Underwood to Jeremiah, Jeremiah Caldwell. That one good for 72 yards. We talk about a young quarterback seeing the field. Everyone takes it for granted that you're going to see the wide open guy. That doesn't always happen, but Bryce Underwood did. He delivers a fine, catchable pass, and Jeremiah Caldwell does the rest. I think he's got the turkey here in the first half, doesn't he? 56, 64, 72. Oh. Three rocks, almost 200 yards, and all of them have found the end zone. Look at that, 64-yard average. If you're a punter, that would be tremendous if you were a punter. As a receiver, that's just gaudy. <laughs> that's just gaudy. If you're a punter, that's beautiful. I mean, think about those. That's per catch. That's Randy Moss way back in the day against Dallas, remember? I guess it could have been against the Lions, too. Oh, now you got to regroup. Tony Petrino tells the truth. Okay, what is done is done. Let's get a good return here. Still a minute. We'll be able to minute 15 or so to work the offense here. Yeah, yeah Roos, this that stuns you, man. I mean, that, that is jolting right there to give up a 72-yard touchdown. On the return with a seam. And a good turn. And he's got some room. All the way down to the 45-yard line. What a return for D.J. Greer. Now, check that. That was Christian Schomer. Schomer on the return. Well, you want to flip the field. Return games can do it, and special teams always say it one third. Watch, catches it deep, but look in front of him. Pushes it, pushes it, then goes back to the middle. Draws the defense in, and then some nice cutting back by Schomer. And, and you can change a game so yeah. quickly. We've seen it. You talk about sudden change. We saw what happened on the long touchdown, but Adams answers with their own great special teams. Christian Schomer there with the return. Now you're on the plus side of the 50. We're still a minute 14, Chef, with yeah. two timeouts. I, you know, I, I love the response, man. There's no sulking. There's no woe is me. Let's hammer it right back at him. Good for them. First and 10. What will they do with it, though? Run it up the gut. Hinky. Well, they try to get him with the fullback trap. But the, the difference Belleville has with the advantage is defensively, they can man up outside. They don't have to commit so many people defending the pass. They still leave seven in the box. Off play action. Pico on a slant route, first down. Brady Priestcorn. Now we saw the kicking ability in the Adams kicking game, Shep. I think they're looking at maybe 12 to 14 yards of a legitimate chance for three. Another throw. An out pattern incomplete. Intended for Marco DeCreasy. Charles Wilson in coverage on DeCreasy. Very small window that Wilson allowed Parker Pico to put the ball. It's a very tight throw, and DeCreasy was able to get one arm on it, but Wilson right on his back. Good job in cover. 35 seconds left. Boy, if you're Adams, though, after that type of return, that type of ability with that connection, you want six. 
Well, obviously you want six, but I'd be happy with three if, I, if I'm Coach Petito. Yeah, six would be the ultimate goal here, Chef, but with 35 seconds. Bunch formation off play action. Floating it, middle of the field, incomplete, and a flag on the play. Intended for Christian Schomer. We have a little bit of contact down the field. Pass interference, defense, number seven. 15 yard penalty will result in a first down. Well, they benefit with the penalty, but this is what they could have. Watch Prisco and go inside, 22. There he goes, wide open. No one goes with him, let it go. Now the quarterback, Pico, sees down the middle, he lets the ball go. That's the one you like, that we kind of, it was kind of like crossing out, he loses the defense. Still two timeouts yep. for Adams. First down and 10 for So Adams. that means the middle of the field, even short of the sticks is open. Every, everything is open for the game, even the running game, if you think you can pop something. But look, we're still talking about seven people in the box, Chef. They have, because they, well now they're bailing out a little bit in coverage. Rolls the pocket, Parker Pico now runs it. Tumbled over at the line of scrimmage. Jay Sean Green, sideline to sideline, forcing Adams to call the timeout. Yeah, Tony Petrito lost about three or four seconds, signaling the official. Parker Pico that time, you thought he could get, get to the sidelines or make some yards, but if not, you just got to toss the ball. You got to get out. Don't burn a timeout in that situation. Yeah. Well, you got it in the middle of the field. You got a guy who's thrown a couple of touchdown passes. He's a tough hombre, right, at your quarterback spot. You're not going to be running against this Belleville team that seems to have done a nice job of figuring out and moving sideline to sideline, keeping you within the tackle box. Well, yeah, you but, roll in yeah, that pocket. You, yeah, don't, don't, what, what do you think about pre-scoring here, considering that 6'6", 215? Right, he will high point the ball. Tony Petrito made a point of that when we visited a few weeks ago, that he will go up and get the football and grab the ball. Not a catcher of the ball, but a grabber. That's what I like. Get it in your hands. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you moving the pocket, Chef. But ultimately, if you're going to have success today, Adams can't go and just start throwing the ball down up and down the field today. They need to establish their run game. Now, with, with what we're seeing here with 22 seconds, obviously, yeah. they're forced to throw the football with only one timeout remaining. By the way, pre-score at 22 yellow is yeah. just a sophomore. Folks, he's 15 years old. Look and he's for, already headed to Central Michigan to play. I tell you what, they got two by two. I would try to I would maybe think about motioning, clearing that out, and leaving three score up top all by himself. Off play action, Pico throws. And that's incomplete. On a slant route intended for free score. Uh, guess who? Number two, Jeremiah Caldwell doing on both sides of the ball. They just tried to run a, a little rub route where they took uh, Schomer, he cleared and pre-scored and cut off him and came underneath Shep, but nothing there now. You're third down and 10. You're in field goal range, so this is important to know. You don't want to take a sack. You don't want to get a holding penalty. Here it is. He's kind of a little bit of a pick. He comes underneath. Good job by Carlo. So if you're Tony Petrito, you still have the time up. If you want to run it here, run towards the middle, and just maybe get three for you, that's fine. And you kick the field goal, but you absolutely want to have at least a field goal attempt out of this drive. They're going to throw it and loft it for this corner. And Prescorn knocked it away. He became a defensive back on that play because Deshaun Lee, who's a wide receiver as an offensive player, had a chance for a pick. Yeah, you know, you talked about earlier, really, he went for the tall receiver and Prescorn, but the throw really never gave, never gave him opportunity to use his advantage, and that's his height. So now, they are going to get an attempt at a field goal here, Shep. Colin Timko has made one already here today from 35. This one from 35. And that is money. Well, they got a chance to double dip, as we like to say. Rochester Adams pulls to within one. They'll get the football to start the second half. And it's 21-20 in a really entertaining football game here today. Colin Timko, these, this is easy. This is straight on. You're not way over on the right hash. This one, that was simple for him. His job finishing it. And 21-20 game at half. 
got some fireworks. We got some huge plays. This is going to be fun. We put our halftime highlight package together. Anything surprise you in this first half so far? Yeah, the ability of Adams to throw the ball. What Belleville is doing is what we know Belleville does. They're going to get chunk plays. They're going to spread the ball outside. They're going to get behind you at times. They're going to do that. But the ability to, to Adams kind of match them in the passing game to an extent with some big plays kind of surprised me. I thought we'd see more of the run game. But there are guys. Belvo has shown that they're suspect on the back end and they're secondary to some blown coverages. Yeah, three big plays, three massive plays by Belleville has them in front. 56-yard touchdown pass to Jeremiah Caldwell in the first quarter. A 64 and 72-yard touchdown pass to Jeremiah Caldwell in the second quarter. We're going to see some type of squib. Right on. Fielded like a ground ball. And a good return to the 49-yard line of Belleville with three seconds left. Hey, listen, with this kid's right wing, why not? Some guys who can go out and get it, use their athleticism, why not give it a shot? Just four missed throws. Those are gaudy wow. numbers for a first half of football in a state championship game against a team that's got a really good defense. Knock it down, knock it down. You can hear Rochester Adams coaching staff knock and, it down. And right? I'd, be, I'd be back even farther. Get back there. You see how deep they're about 15-20. Do not bite on a double move. Keep everything in front of you. Three-man rush. Underwood heaves it downfield. He's got a man to Deshaun Lee, but he fell down. And that'll do it for the half. What a half it was, though. Huh? Adams and Belleville. There's a reason that these two teams are playing in this game right here, and I think they showcased it throughout the first half. Oh, we've seen some running skills. We've seen passing skills, throwing skills, special teams. We've had... Big play, Shep, in all shapes and forms. Underwood looks calm, cool, relaxed, and looks like he's having fun. And that's what it's about. 14-year-old kid, yeah, it's amazing. I think when I'm 14, I'm just glad I got a high school football <laughs> jersey and playing freshman football, and I look at this young man, and he has everything ahead of him yet. I was glad I knew the playbook at 14. Underwood. Of course, if I threw for 228 yards and three touchdowns, I'd be pretty happy, too. Right? No, oh, absolutely. I, you just wonder defensively when Adams goes in, they have a chance to talk with their defense if they're going to change, if they're going to maybe give a little bit more help in the secondary so they don't give up those huge chunk plays that we saw in and the first half. This is where the adjustments at halftime oftentimes come into play. Underwood has been stellar. Jermaine Crowell's team, who has never been in a state championship game looks very much at home. They lead it 21-20. Thanks to their big play ability, they have showcased it here on a Saturday afternoon at Ford Field. They're up by one, and they will start the second half on defense. Brooke Fletcher will talk with both head coaches, get their thoughts on what they think of that first half of play. The first one is Jermaine Crowell, and he is with our Brooke Fletcher on the field. Brooke? Coach, we saw you talking to your players before you guys headed to the locker room. What was your message to them? I wanted them to enjoy the moment. I mean, th this group of seniors went through three semifinal losses, you know, and they were the group that were able to get over the hump. So I wanted them to appreciate, you know, all the different struggles and appreciate the moment, everybody. You know, I wanted them to understand that as much as it is about winning this game, it's not as much about winning the game as it is that football team able to be able to get the whole town of Belleville to say tap, tap, tap. That to me, I, I know we was winning. So winning that way is, is bigger than, than this. But with them, I think we got a little bit of extra, extra oomph. All right, thank you so much, Coach. All right. Guys, back to you. All right, Brooke, thanks very much. Great storytelling in that first half. And the Tigers and the Highlanders have given us quite a bit to talk about. 21-20, Belleville leads it on Valley Sports. Need money for college? You need My Student Aid. 
My Student Aid is the go-to resource that helps Michigan families find money to pay for college. Plus, they'll guide you through the financial aid process and answer any questions you have. For grants, scholarships, and more, connect with My Student Aid. Helping make college affordable for everyone. Learn more at michigan.gov slash mistudentaid. Keep your home warm this winter with Family Heating and Cooling. Family is not just our name. It's the way we do business. Our family has been keeping families and businesses safe and comfortable for more than 50 years. Our estimators and technicians do not work on commission, so they won't sell you products or services you don't need or want. Call to schedule a free, no-pressure quote and let Family Heating and Cooling assist you with all your heating needs. Tis the season at Suburban Cadillac of Troy, where we're wishing you and your family the happiest of holidays and hope you enjoy all the smiles, laughter, and excitement the season has to offer, no matter what's on your wish list. And for those who have been really good this year, come in now for the season's best sales event and unwrap a 2022 Cadillac XT5 luxury for just $4.29 a month. Isn't it time you get what you really want this holiday season? Happy Holidays from Suburban Cadillac of Troy. With Xfinity Home, you can keep your home and everything in it more protected. I can wrangle all my deliveries. Thanks, Hoss. And I help walk the dock from wherever. Well, I can bust curfew breakers in an instant. Well, you all have Xfinity Home with cameras to home security monitored by the pros. <laughs> Learn more about home security or get our self-monitored solution starting at just $10 per month. Your hometown sports network, Valley Sports Detroit, the heart of the fan. We've got more football coming your way. Up next is the Division 5 state final between Marine City and Grand Rapids Catholic Central. Our coverage begins tentatively at 4.30 p.m. on Valley Sports Detroit Plus. But you're going to want to stick around after that because we have a battle in Division 3. We have Dante Moore and the Crusaders of Detroit MLK taking on DeWitt. Let me tell you, we covered both of those teams earlier this year, and that is going to be a great game. A lot more to come from Ford Field here today. And we have a good game going on right here. It's a close one. Belleville leads 21-20. to Much more when we come back. Outside, inside, wall side, outside, inside, wall side. Right now, get half off every wall side window. Any style, any size, any color. Plus, no interest till 2027. No down payment. For your home, put wall side on your side. Schedule your safe at home or virtual estimate today at wallside.com. Being the new kid on the block in Michigan, do you think you can make an impact right away? Sure, why not? I know someone else who has. Who? It's your auto insurance. <laughs> you mean the new car insurance carrier, saving drivers up to 60%? Yep, yeah, that's the one. They just expanded into Michigan because of the new law. That sounds too good to be true. Take it from me, one of their biggest fans and their newest customer. Cure Auto Insurance, now in Michigan. Every second of every quarter of every game. Valley Sports Detroit, home of the Pistons, all season long. The 2021 MHSAA Football Finals on Valley Sports are brought to you by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Family, not just the name of our company, but the way we do business. And by Figer Law. Nobody knows the law like we do. Figer Law. 
The fourth annual Legacy Senior All-Star Game will be hosted tomorrow in Brighton at the Legacy Center Sports Complex. The event will once again be televised on Valley Sports Detroit, where 80 of Michigan's best graduating seniors from across the state will strap on their helmets for the final time. Tune in at noon on Valley Sports Detroit as these athlete athletes showcase their skills for a statewide audience. We have quite the game here at Ford Field. We have the executive director of the MHSAA, Mark Yule, joining Matt Shepard up in the booth when we return. A team of world-renowned specialists who plan the most comprehensive course of cancer treatment. Technology so advanced, it delivers the greatest precision in the world. Access to the most promising life-saving clinical trials. And a team of nurse navigators who are by your side through every step of treatment, tailored to your needs. Only at the Sparrow Herbert Herman Cancer Center. For health, for care, for life. Need money for college? You need My Student Aid. My Student Aid is the go-to resource that helps Michigan families find money to pay for college. Plus, they'll guide you through the financial aid process and answer any questions you have. For grants, scholarships, and more, connect with My Student Aid. Helping make college affordable for everyone. Learn more at michigan.gov slash aid. There's been a lot of hesitancy in our communities of color regarding vaccination. And it's extremely important that our communities of color don't get left behind. We know that people of color are more heavily affected by COVID-19. We were dying at higher rates and getting sicker at higher rates in other communities, and we need to protect ourselves. I urge everyone to be vaccinated, especially my brothers and sisters. We just don't want you to be left behind. Got to be really good to get to Ford Field on Thanksgiving weekend. Belleville's Tigers and the Highlanders of Rochester Adams have proved that in Division One. Outstanding first half of football, 21-20. We're joined by the MHSA Executive Director, Mark Yule. It has been fun. It has been entertaining all weekend. What have you enjoyed most? You know, it's been a little bit of everything this weekend. You know, we had uh, 107 points scored last night, if you like offense, and then uh, today a 14-10 game to start the day, and now 21-20 at halftime. It's just been a great weekend. A lot of football going on in our state today, both uh, collegiately and with our high schools. So. Uh, just great to be a part of it. Yeah, two more games to go as well, and they should be good ones for sure. New playoff system a year ago. How do you think it's worked out for you? You know, our schools are real happy with it. It uh, Strength of schedule is what it's called, and what it really meant to do was give our best programs um, an ease of regular season scheduling. That under the old six wins and you're in, yeah. um, scheduling was really, really hard for schools that had any success. So strength of schedule this year. Hopefully uh, schools will play up a division, play a tougher opponent, and uh, we'll see how that goes. We had some good feedback this year, both uh, positive and negative, so we'll see what the offseason brings. Do you think you have it right, or does it still need to be tweaked? And if so, what will those tweaks be, do you think? So the interesting part of the tweak is that last year during the pandemic, um, every school got in the playoffs. So right. Uh, here in back-to-back -back years, half of our schools, um, you know, schools have that two-year. Last year we were all in. This year it was strength of schedule. Now you can ask them for their opinion and really uh, be able to ring in and say, well, this is what we want to do moving forward. So surveying is ongoing, and we'll see what our schools want us to do. You mentioned the pandemic. We can't do an interview without talking about it because it affected so many, including the student athletes and the coaches and the student body. We see them in full force throughout the season and here at Ford Field. How enjoyable has that been for you and your staff? It's been incredible. You know, we were here in January with 250 fans a game and really no atmosphere, environment. And, mm -hmm. you know, as you saw with your work during the Tigers this summer, having people back in the ballpark, just the energy and the buzz. And we've seen that the last two days, and we're going to look to carry that into winter. Yeah, it helps all of us. Speaking of winter, basketball is up and running, and basketball state championships are never far away for us here on Valley Sports for both the boys and the girls. How much are you looking forward to that? It, uh, winter is here. You know, ice hockey started games last week. Uh, girls basketball will kick off this week with the boys after.
after them. Competitive cheer, wrestling, it, uh, we're here. And of course, with COVID, um, when you're indoors and during the winter, that's when uh, you know the radar goes up the highest. And we'll just continue to kind of take things on a week-to-week, month-to-month basis. And hopefully, uh, we'll get to talk to you at the Breslin Center here uh, end of March. Yeah, I know you're busy this time of year. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving with you and your family. You, you guys always do a great job in helping us prepare for these state championships. So in return, if you need to go to a Tigers game, you make sure you call us first, okay? Can you do that? Go Tigers. Right, Thanks, Matt. Yeah, absolutely. 21-20. The Belleville Tigers have the one-point lead, but Adams has shown big play capability as well. We've seen it throughout in this Division One, but it has been three touchdowns by number two in white. That has been the difference. They're up by one, and Adams gets the football to start the second half when we return. In life, things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. Well, I got my start in officiating when a friend told me I should try it. At first, I just did basketball, and I got hooked. Before long, I added baseball, softball, football, and volleyball. I really enjoyed giving back to the game, working with kids, and working with my local association to recruit and train new officials. I would like to say to anybody that officiating is a great way to help kids and stay connected to the game. We always need new officials. There's help wanted just this here. The Menards Black Friday Sale. Hurry in for best selection. Prices good through December 5th. Protect guns, ammo, and other valuable items in this secure 30-gun fire safe. Get it for $499 after rebate. This large 12-quart air fryer has seven cooking options. The perfect gift for your favorite foodie, just $79.99. Check out these and more amazing Black Friday deals at Menards. Available in-store only while supplies last. Save big money at Menards. The 2021 MHSA Football Finals on Battle Sports are brought to you by the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. The vaccine is our way out of COVID-19. Find your vaccine at michigan.gov slash COVID vaccine. And by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers, think Ford first. It has been a blast. It is every year we do this, but especially here in the first half of Division I. Belleville with the slimmest of leads against Rochester Adams. 21-20. We'll get to Brooke Fletcher momentarily, but first, Rob Rubick, your thoughts on that first half of play that kept us on the edge of our seat throughout most. We got our money's worth, didn't we? Yeah. And everyone sitting here did as well. Very competitive game. We knew what we were going to see from Belleville. Whether or not they could do it, we weren't sure, but they did it in the passing game. You know, tw 21 points, three long touchdowns. Jeremiah Caldwell has just been off the charts, yeah. but he could do it alone, Chef. If it's not for this young man, number 19, Bryce Underwood, he's not getting these catches, but he is putting the ball where it needs to be, as you can see there in the first long one for Caldwell. Then once again, Jeremiah said, we did it once. We might as well do it deuce. And he finds him again as he gets behind the defense. Shomer once again, he gets a touchdown, but not, that is not it. We're going to get another one. We're going to see the trifecta on the slant. Now, this isn't on anyone in particular. It's on the defense in general, a blown coverage. And you let someone with that type of ability open space in the field, you're going to pay for it, and Caldwell made them pay. Well, we thought Belleville, would re their strength would be through the air for sure, but we didn't know Rochester Adams could equal that, and Parker Pico has done a really nice job of feeling his way throughout this first half and burning Belleville's defense up top. Well, we know Parker Pico is a physical runner, that he's going to get you three, four yards on most of those midlines, and he has the ability to pop it big. What we didn't think we were going to see is this right here. That's the ability to throw the ball down the field vertically. Get it to your playmakers. This time you see pre-scored the six foot six, 215 pound sophomore wide receiver slash tight end get down the middle of the coverage. And then once again, this time he's going to get Schomer, who comes out of the slot, makes a really nice move. But this is a perfectly delivered ball, Shep. These are throws that seasoned quarterbacks make. I had a chance to watch Parker Pico early on in the regional finals. Outside in the wind, not as effective today as you can look here. Very effective. The total yards. A little bit skewed. 
towards Belleville because of the gaudy passing yards in the big plays. Game summary and our stats brought to you by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. The time of possession heavily in favor of Rochester Adams, and they have done something with it, but Belleville's quick strike ability has been massive in the first half. We still have a half to go, and Adams will get the football first. Their head coach talks with Brooke Fletcher when we come back to Ford Field on Valley Sports in a moment. We're a tough town, and nothing, I mean nothing, can slow us down. Now more than ever, it's important to support our local businesses, our neighbors, and our friends and family. We are all connected by this beautiful community. We love this town. Atchison Ford, Belleville. Years of playing sports took a toll on my feet. The worst was the tear in my Achilles tendon. I went to fix my feet today and I've been pain free for two years. I'm back to pickleball five days a week. Amazing. I've been fixing foot pain for decades. Don't give up hope. Call or visit Fix My Feet today and live pain free. Yet another new Fix My Feet location is now open in Brighton. Celebrate our Brighton grand opening with a free exam and free fitting at any of our five locations. Hard to wrap, easy to give. The Steel Holiday Gift Guide has something for everyone on your list. Real Steel. Find yours. Tossed. Buffalo. Sauced. Hot honey. Flipped. Boneless. Dipped. Arby. Razzled. Buffalo. Dazzled. Hot honey. Five dollar boneless wings and crinkle fries deal. Arby's. We have the meat. Every second of every quarter of every game. Valley Sports Detroit, home of the Pistons, all season long. Ready to start the third. Rochester Adams down a point. How do they come back? Tony Petrito is ready to talk about it with our Brooke Fletcher. Brooke? Coach, your guys have remained competitive on both sides of the ball, but what was your message to them in the locker room? Just stick to what we do. Be resilient. We've been talking about it all year. Stop making mistakes and play our game. Bryce Underwood finding Jeremiah Caldwell three times in the end zone. How do you slow them down? It's got to be a better team defense. We haven't had those kind of breakdowns all year, and I trust in our defensive coaches to make some changes. All right, thanks so much, Coach. Guys, back to you. All right, Brooks, thanks very much. They're going to have to. They've been playing man for the most part on the wide receivers for Belleville, including Jeremiah Caldwell, and he has burned them so far for three scores. Bryce Underwood, when given time, and even when not given time, Roops, he's been able to run the football pretty well when he's not throwing it. Yeah, he, he can uh, scramble, he can extend plays, he can make big plays with his legs as well, and that's why he's going to be one of the top dual threat quarterbacks eventually. I know he's only a freshman. I don't want to crown him king yet, yet but quite a player. When Coach Petrito tells Brooke Fletcher that, you know, we, we've got to do a better job, we've got to make some changes defensively, what do you think those changes will be? Well, we talked about it a little before the half as we were going out, Chip. I think he's going to have to commit somebody else in that coverage in the secondary to give a little bit of help because they don't seem to be able to hold up in the man outside with the speed that they're facing. They're getting beat. They're getting the receivers. They're getting behind them. So maybe you bring a safety. Maybe you go too high safety so one of them can help over the top. But that's going to limit you a little bit against the run game. But you're, that's your strength. You can stop the run. Make Belleville show you that they can run the football and move it against you. So... Allocate a few more in coverage. 24 minutes in the books, 24 to go before we crown a Division I state champion. And Rochester Adams will receive. Parker Pico is back inside his own five, tucked in there, waiting for the kickoff from Braden Lane. Don't see that very often. You don't see a quarterback returning kicks very often. Lane ready to put a left foot into it. Pico on a hop. Lowers the shoulder to the 30-yard line. 
Parker Pico, three for seven for 96 yards and a couple of touchdowns. But also on the ground, carried it 14 times for 51 yards to lead his offense. Immediately, you look to see who plays the right tackle spot. Alex DeCreek is not in there right now. He was injured in the first half, and he has been their best lineman, both offensively and defensively, all season long, but injured his ankle in the first half. Jet motion to the 31. It's Christian Schomer picking up a yard. The Creek walking with the trainer of Rochester Adams, testing that right ankle. It's heavily bandaged. Looks pretty tentative there, Shep. That's not a good sign for the Highlander fans. Looks like he's in quite a bit of discomfort. Out of the pistol formation. Pico off play action. The throw tipped in the air and incomplete. Good read on the part of Belleville. Jeremiah Beasley got a couple of hands on it. And you set it up right, Chef. That's a good read. How quick. Watch Beasley to your left, number one. He starts to drop in coverage, and he gets back there quickly, and Adams gets away with one here. That very easily could have been intercepted. Beasley hops into the passing lane. It does fall harmlessly to the turf, but wow, that's close. And that is... If you're Tony Petrito, that is not the way you want to start this half. Also had a couple of receivers in the same vicinity, which makes it difficult, too. Aired out again. Nice catch. Shy of the first down. It'll bring up fourth and short. But Christian Schomer's got some good hands on him, doesn't he? What do you think here? Uh, I think you got to punt it. I think Tony, you, you might just do your pooch. I, I, I keep... Obviously, you keep uh, Parker Pico in the game. You show like you're going to go for it, and you pooch punt and get the roll and play field position. Only need a yard. Because what is it about, Shep? Risk, Risk and reward. Eight to get this play away. Four. Two. They're going for it. Pico's got it. And then some, past the 45 to the 48-yard line. That took guts. He got the glory in game nine. Well, they come on a big third down. Pause right here. You're going to see they're going to read in here. And if he, if he takes the back, which is Henke, boom, he takes Now you pull it as a quarterback. That's a great job. You're, you're optioning the tackle in the midline. They let him go. He takes the quarterback, and you pull it and go. Parker Pico read it perfectly. Yeah, wow, De gutsy call by Tony Petrino. Sure Petrito. was. Devin Williams was all over it. Had to hand it off to Henke. Adams budged. Yeah, that, that's a gutsy call for your offense. Full start. Offense number four. Five-yard penalty. First down. But it also shows the respect you have, I think, for Belleville's offense, that they were really clicking and starting to move the ball. So you want to try to keep it out of their hands the best you can. First and 15 now for Rochester Adams. Coach Petrito told us during the week, we are best when we are balanced. Trying to get there here today on a first and 15. Pico, flush from the pocket, throws on the run, and at the feet of his intended receiver, incomplete. Well, Petrito's been here before. He knows what he's doing. He won it in 2003, beating Brother Rice 28 to 7. But this was back in the Pontiac Silverdome. And Alan Guy. We talked early on about this young man. When I'm, I think he went to Northwood. Had a really nice, or Wayne State. I'm not sure which one of the two. Had a really nice college career as well. But look at him. <laughs> he don't look like you, a quarterback. You, that is a thick man slinging the ball down the field. You don't see many quarterbacks wearing number 37, do you? I don't see many kids having that type of jersey on in the stands and saying, I want to throw the football with number 37 on my back. Third down and long now for Adams. 
Well, Parker Pico needs to be smart with the football. As you said earlier, you said nothing wrong with punting. You could try to establish field position, but third down and 14, you do not want to throw it in harm's way and give Belleville a chance to return it or at least, worst case scenario, get the short field to work with. Rochester Adams undefeated this season. First time that's happened in school history. They're going to have to call a timeout. They got to burn it because there was only one on the play clock. To your point, Rob, they were not in much of a hurry, and they needed to be. Instead, they'll contemplate what they call on third and 14. Your hometown sports network, Valley Sports Detroit, the heart of the fan. Some kids worshipped superheroes growing up, but I worshipped the Pistons. Isaiah Lambeer, John Sally, Vinny Johnson, James Edwards, Rick Mahorn, those are my superheroes growing up. If I had to pick one, especially then, it was Joe Dumars. The last time I played, I was pretty out of shape, but I did hit a three and then I kind of went back to the bench. I was never really into the, the teal Pistons, but on a scale from one to ten, I'm a Pistons fan all in, I'll say a ten, and you can ask anyone around here. There is no glory in practice. But without practice, there is no glory. It's been an exciting few days of high school football. Our team is live from Ford Field this evening for the two remaining state championship games. Take a look at the rest of the schedule. It lays out like this. Division 5, Grand Rapids Catholic Central against Marine City. They'll kick off at 4.30, and then Division 3, the nightcap. To put a capper on our entire weekend, DeWitt against Detroit Martin Luther King. Tune in to Valley Sports and the Valley Sports app for complete coverage. We've got a couple of Mr. Football candidates in that last game. It's the Hungry Howies state champs, Mr. Football finalist list. Zach Ahern, the quarterback from Rockford. Ty Holtz from DeWitt. And plenty of good talent there. Dante Moore and Ty Holtz will be dueling it out tonight. Third and long. And it's going to be a fourth down play because of the play made by Aaron Alexander. And that linebacker is going to Michigan. And he is extremely talented. Well, not much chance for Parker Pico on this time. Alexander's going to come to the right here. You see the pressure outside a little bit there, and he just comes, gets pressure, and there's nothing. Pico has no opportunity to really do anything with that. It came so quick. From the right side of your screen, it looks, you know, that's a tough job yeah. because you look at the tackle. Yeah. He kind of stops. It's kind of a delayed blitz, and when he comes a tackle that time to the, the right tackle, already swung outside. I think that was Hassan Murray that did that, number 77. Third tackle of the day for Aaron Alexander. They pressure. They block the punt. Alexander blocks the punt. And dragged down at the five-yard line. Jeremiah Beasley scooped it up after Aaron Alexander makes back-to-back -back big plays for Belleville. Watch right up the middle, comes unblocked. Patera, the personal protector, he goes outside too quick because as a personal protector, you want to go inside, out. If he, if he checks inside, there's a chance to get the punt off. Just watch right in the middle. Alexander comes up the middle. He actually had to slow down to block the punt. He was there so quickly. And big turn of events for the Belleville Tigers. Let's see what they can do if they can really make the Adams Highlanders pay here with, by getting six. What a job, huh? Aaron Alexander, one of those guys you talked about. High-level talent, back-to-back -back solid plays. Now Underwood keeps it himself. Nowhere to go. Driven backwards. And a timeout because of an injured Rochester Adams player. That's Rocco Orsini.
He's a big piece to that Adams offensive and defensive line. They need him. All right, we're going to take one more look here at the block punt. And Will Crow right here in the, at the right of the center. I'm not sure what he's going to do. You watch. He just releases them inside. you got to get more of them. You know, you're coached to, to check and then release for punt coverage. But you have to try to stop the momentum of the on rusher. And he doesn't. And as I said, Alexander almost comes to a complete stop here. He already jumps, lands, and then blocks it. So nice effort, though, by some of the Adams to, uh, punt team to get back, at least keep him out of the end zone. I've seen guys block punts with their hands, rarely with their belly button. With their bodies. <laughs> but that's, that's exactly what happened with Alexander on that play. I mean, that was a gut punch, literally. Second down and goal. Caldwell cuts it up. Nice play. Touchdown. Actually, that's Kevin Sims. The sophomore increases Belleville's lead to seven. Well, this is just a toss stretch play. The offensive line all steps to the left, hat on hat, and this is up to Sims, a cut when he sees it. Hanky does a good job of setting the edge, turning in at number 24. Hanky does a good job, but Sims does a better job when he sees him. Oh, he just cuts it up real quick, and they can't get inside out, and they really miss big number 79 right now, Alex DeGreek, because he's yep. the one that is the outstanding edge player for them. Extra point from Braden Lane is good. After the blocked punt, Belleville takes advantage. Shortly after Aaron Alexander's key defensive play and special teams performance, Kevin Sims is able to reach pay dirt. Alexander with a block punt. They take over at the five and a couple of plays later on the jet sweep, Kevin Sims cuts it back up to extend the lead. It's now eight in favor of Belleville. I'm heading out, man. You want to ride? No, I got my car, but I actually really need to go to the bathroom. Dude, are you okay? I am definitely buzzed. Yeah. I think I will take this, and I will take that ride home. When a child is diagnosed with cancer, a family's world comes apart. But with the help of your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers and the bottomless toy chest, families can receive support as they fight to put their lives back together. Come into your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers during their season of giving and drop off a new toy for a child with cancer. The bottomless toy chest will distribute the toys to hospitals throughout Metro Detroit. With your help, we can put a smile back on a sick child's face because smiles help heal. This season, Valley Sports Detroit and your Detroit Pistons go hand in hand. Don't miss a moment. Stream your team with the Valley Sports app. Keep up with your Pistons this season on Valley Sports Detroit and the Valley Sports app, presented by T-Mobile. Keep up with everything MHSAA on social media. Look us up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube for tournament updates, event announcements, video highlights, and high school sports news from around the state of Michigan. It's the best way to connect with the MHSAA every day. Really good weekend of football as usual. And this Saturday has been no different. Good one earlier today. Pawama Westphalia beats Lawton. And Rochester Adams and Belleville squaring off here in a one-score difference. Belleville up by eight right now. Right. You know, it, it's a bad start to this half. Offensively, you don't move the ball. You get the block punt. You set the touchdown for Belleville if you're an Adams fan. But you also have to remember, there's still half the third in the entire fourth quarter left in this game. Pico from inside the five. Barrels his way to the 23. <laughs> Too much to say that Rochester Adams has to score here. No panic. You're Tony Petrita. If you want to run the ball, still do what you're doing. That's what you do. You come out, your game plan doesn't change one iota right now. 
that does change your game plan. Both offensively and yeah, defensively. Both sides of the ball. Oh, it's just tough to see. Yeah. We saw last year in the D1 game with Harry Unger yes. from Davidson, who's now at Air Force. And that's just tough. You, you want to play the best with your best. And we want to see the best, don't we? On the ground, big seam. Flag on the play. Christian Schomer with a big gainer, but will it stand? They're going to get a holding call, Shep. Tate Pico, and you know, it's, it's a tough call because he really gets him under holding. the chin. Offense number 30, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. He gets him under the chin and really pancakes him. He's right here in the slot. Let it go. It's straight ahead. I think it. He gets a good block and then pancakes him. But you see that arm, that left arm is kind of out there, and that's what you see as an official. When it's a good hit, he's underneath, low pad. He's kind of grabbing him by the arm. Yeah. Boy, that's... But, you know, here's the deal. Whether or not it's holding, I'm not sure. But if it looks like a hold and you're the official with that back judger, you got to throw the flag because it looks like a hold because of what you see. First and 13. Looking for the edge. Nowhere to be found. First time that Joey Shallow has run that play. A loss of four to make it second and 17. Six and a half to go in the third. Pico four for 10 so far on the day. A handoff straight ahead to the 20 yard line. All right, now once again, you're behind the sticks. Last couple possessions. Remember third and 15 last, and now you're looking at a third and 13. This is not what this Adams team is built for. They're a run first pass when we want to, not when you want us to. And that's what they're facing right now. But in their passing game, run some crosses. You've had success with guys crossing. Defensive coverage, was, they've had struggle at times. Got to buy some time, but first a time out by Jermaine time Crowell Belleville. First and Belleville. You know, Crowell has been part of a couple of state titles at Cass Tech. And he said each time that his team has lost, it galvanized his team. The expectation is always to win, but he is learning continuously as a head coach. When he first became a, became a head coach, he said, I was a little naive when I took over. Thought about school, thought about football games. Had to realize that my kids had real problems outside of school, and I had to be a little bit more of a better communicator than I originally thought I was. So he's grown up, he and his staff, and it's paid off in a championship run here this season. He is trusting with his staff. He does not call the offense, does not call the defense. He leaves his two assistants, main assistants, to do that. He believes his job and what his role is, is managing the team, to working with the kids, dealing with those issues you talked about, Shep, trying to build a community within his own football team. That's a lot of trust on your coordinators. Here comes a blitz. They pick it up, and Pico goes incomplete, and a late flag flies. <laughs> I don't know if that's on those who are covering Chomer or Prescorn, who's down the right sideline, but usually that type of flag indicates interference. Well, it's a big difference if it's holding or interference. Pass interference, defense number three. It's a 15 yard penalty, will result in a first down. Yeah, that's going to be pass interference, and the reason I'm saying there's holding, that's 15. They needed 13. That's the first. Now, holding would have been 10. 
And we're going to look here. You know what? Schomer's coming out of it. Uh, yeah. If that's who they threw it at, I'm not sure because, like you said, Shep, Priest was outside. It doesn't have to be a catchable ball either. This is high school. Right, right. Just has to there be is in no the air. There's no such thing. Right. Just has to be in the air. No such thing as an uncatchable ball. No such thing as a tackle box either. Off the gut. Maybe a yard or two for Griffin Henke. Yes, once again, he officials, and I'm not being critical, but I, and they're just doing what they are coached to do, the officials. We need to, as a high school football association and the parent, we need to start blowing that whistle quicker. I, I truly believe that. That is, as far as injury pre prevention goes, what happens is you see the NFL now, how they don't blow it forever. I know. And in college, they're blowing it later and later. Well, that's the trickle-down effect, but this is high school. It should be quick whistles, not late whistles. Second down and eight. That's well put. Yeah, looked like a bobble. Belleville has got that sniffed out. I mean, there, there's just not much there. Devin Williams leading the way. There is just not much there for Adams when they're trying to run that play up the middle. They close so quickly. You want to read the tackle, right? Watch the penetration inside. He pulls it, and he can't get it out. He's a little late on pulling it. He was undecided. He kind of left it in too long to Henke. When he tried to pull it, Henke was already being buckled up. No gain, and... Third and nine. We've seen the last three third down. Third, 15, third, 13, third, nine. You, you do wonder if that might lead to another play because of how quickly Belleville collapses inside. Let's see. Third down and nine. Pico from the pocket. Sidearms it wide open and into Belleville territory. That's a first down pitch and catch and a job well done by Max Cyborg. Crossing routes with switching guys. You're gonna see Pico looking left. The wide receiver comes to the inside. He sits on the hook. You see DeCreasy going out. They bring Cyborg in and he just settles down. Any of that crossing action in the route that seems to be giving the Tigers secondary trouble. First and ten for Adams on the counter. Still on his feet. Trying to weave his way forward. Joey Shallow. Joey Shallow. No need to panic if you're Rochester Adams because of it's a one score game and there's another as you mentioned a full quarter to play. Yeah but with that man right there Tony Petrito is facing is they're just not winning first down. Right. They, it's putting it behind the sticks from the get go and when you're a beer based team whether it's inside outside beer you want to win that first down to set up short second. Pico still has it. He fumbled it. It's scooped up down the left sideline. Dennis Crawford inside the 25 and another big play for the Belleville defense. Sometimes bad things happen because of great effort. You're trying to do too much. And you're going to see Parker Peepko here, number 11, the quarterback. After the fake, he pulls it. A good read. Now he goes up. He gets hit. He's bouncing. He's trying to get extra yardage. And as you can see, their number 34, Deshaun Green, reaches, pulls the ball away from him. And that's just so tough to blame your quarterback. He's playing hard. He's trying to get extra. But how about the heads-up play of Green? That's a couple of big plays he's made here today. But a really good effort by DeCreasy because if he doesn't run him down and, and uh, stop Dennis Crawford, that's going to be a two-touch, two-score lead, two-possession lead. This could have been trouble, big trouble for Adams. Not that they're not in trouble now, but at least he got an opportunity to defend a short field. Underwood goes to work on a first and ten. Blitz comes. He throws, and that's a seam route that falls incomplete. And I thought we might see a fly come out that time. Trevor Jones was working down the slot. And you hear the officials get it from the Belleville crowd. I didn't get a really good look at it, Chef, so I'm not going to you know, judge either way. I'm going to side with the officials. I just said I'm not going to judge either way, yet I'm going to side with the officials. I don't. You give me that look. But, yeah, I, it's one of those situations. If you're Belleville, okay, you don't like the call, move on. Next play, try to make them pay. Second and ten. Here comes another blitz. 
And a handoff to the left side. Touchdown, Belleville. Jeremiah Beasley. Jeremiah Beasley, he's getting his claws out here like the rest of the Tigers. Number one, the tailback you're going to see here. He gets through, and then he just gets to the outside, uses speed, picks up a good block down the field by Crawford. And you got to like number two, doing that defense, offense, and also blocking for his team. They Beasley to walk into the end zone, and right now the Tigers are rolling. Braden Lane for the extra point. He's been perfect all day long. And Belleville's offense continues to shine. They now lead by 15, 35 to 20. Well, this touchdown occurs for a few reasons. A good job up front on the left side blocking by Watkins and Johnson right in here. Let's watch this little triangle. They do a good job. But also the defensive end, that's pre-score, goes too far up the field and allows Beasley to run underneath him without even being blocked. You gotta be more under control, deep as a deepest when you're trying to set that edge. He gets too far up, creates a natural lane underneath him. And also, like I said, Watkins and Johnson, you know, we talk about Clark the center, Fairfax and Warren, all these guys up front are really starting to take over. They're starting to wear down a little bit physically this front of Adams who sorely misses Alex the Greek. Big chump play, chuck plays by Belleville. And the most points allowed by Rochester Adams this season. It's still a quarter to go. Adams led 17-7. Late in the second. Belleville has outscored him 28-3 since. On the return from the five. And a good return past the 30. To about the 32-yard line. Demarcus Rouse on the return. We set it last possession for Rochester Adams. Now, we really mean it. They have to score here. Well, last time they had the ball, I said, you don't have to throw the ball. You still run your offense. Now I'm going to temper that a little bit by saying you may want to try to throw on first down here or second down. You can still run the ball, but you have to throw when you want to throw. If you try to run it, run it, and throw, things have not been good. They just can't get anyone open down the field. And this is the luxury, you see. When you can do this out here, you got one hit, one up high covering, one down low covering, man up. Start the drive with a run play up the middle. Hinky with the carry and a good pickup of five or six. That's what they have seven once they mark it. The, the big difference between Adams tonight when I saw Adams when we called the game against West Bloomfield is early in the game they were being defended. The run game was just like it looks here. They're having a hard time with it. By the fourth quarter, they were starting to wear him down and get some trunk plays. You're just not seeing that today. Belleville seems very fresh up front defensively. Under two minutes left in the third. Pico still has it and dropped at the 43-yard line. Close to a first down. Good enough to move those chains. Still minute 30 and counting here in the um, third quarter. There's plenty of time. The problem you're facing is defensively now, Belleville seems to have it going where they're being able to get plays, move the ball, and score on you. So offensively, you, you've got to you got to try to get, obviously, a touchdown here. We have an injured Belleville Tiger down on the field. I think that's number 24, James Robinson. But so you're, you're offensively, you have to get something done in this drive. 122 left to go in the third. Belleville leads it big by 15 at Ford Field on Valley Sports. A team of world-renowned specialists who plan the most comprehensive course of cancer treatment. Technology so advanced 
it delivers the greatest precision in the world. Access to the most promising life-saving clinical trials and a team of nurse navigators who are by your side through every step of treatment tailored to your needs. Only at the Sparrow Herbert Herman Cancer Center. For health, for care, for life. As the voice of Michigan student athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports are supposed to be played. We are responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere so the interscholastic athletes may thrive. We believe athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe students in the stands should have fun, but not take the focus away from the game. We believe coaches should act as teachers. With Belleville making it to the state finals for the first time in school history, the school wanted to do something a little special for the team. So on Monday, students threw a celebration parade through the halls at the end of the day where the team, cheerleaders, and the drum line walked through the halls as their classmates stood outside their classrooms to cheer them on. That's pretty special. But guys, if they win here today, I'd imagine they have had a little bigger parade, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's not it's, just going to be in school, bro. Yeah, it's it's, it's going to be throughout the entire town. Yeah, through the streets of Belleville. It's good stuff right there, though. Love the community pride. Love the the school pride that these schools have shown. Pico launching downfield, and that is intercepted. Intercepted by a man who's got three touchdowns as a wide receiver, Jeremiah Caldwell. As an over-the-shoulder grab, much like we've seen as he dances his way into the end zone on offense. Well, it's all about dictating what the other team does. When you start dictating what the team can do against you, you're in control. Yeah. And that's why Belfort is in control of this game. They're dictating, saying, you have to throw the ball. You can't run the ball right now, and you're going to have to put it up, and we're going to be ready. Because we have some players on the back end. We talked about the strength of this defense, to me, was the secondary. Look at Jeremiah Cowell. That's, that's, that's a young player who's going to be an impact player at the next level quickly. Tough to overcome turnovers against highly skilled squads. And you just, you almost feel like you have to play a perfect ball game. And that's nearly impossible in sports. Now you get the feeling one more for Belleville, and they salt it away, don't you? Yeah, you got to, I mean, if you're Adams, you'd like to try to turn the ball over deep in their end, but they've been very, very good with it. Underwood, deep ball, and knocked away. A job well done defensively. Joey Shallow played that ball perfectly and knocked it away with a left hand. Well, this ball was aired out at times. You've seen Underwood, the quarterback, throw some seeds outside. This time, he put a little air underneath. There's nothing wrong with that. He wanted to give Wilson an opportunity to get underneath the ball. You see Shallow coming, hand offhand on the shoulder pad a little bit. Some of the bell of the hand might be interference, but I think it's a good no call. I mean, we could throw a flag on every single play if that's what we're looking at, right? Absolutely. I mean, you got to let him play at some point. Yeah, I mean, defense is making some good plays out there. Quick throw to the wing. Flag on the play. Not sure this one will hold up inside the 40. It doesn't take away from the fact that Deshaun Lee just had a really incredible play. He was able to break tackles, catch the ball. He showed quickness. He showed strength. He showed power. He showed speed. He showed everything on that one play that's going to get called back. Holding. Yep. Offense number four. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Second down. Belleville being pretty efficient here, wouldn't you say, Chef? <laughs> the last four times we've had the ball, four touchdowns. Now, it gets hindered a little bit by that penalty call there, but puts it back in the second and 11. Off play action, another swing pass to the 41. 
Jeremiah Caldwell, you went to Deshaun Lee. Now you say, I'm going to work the other big-time receiver. I have number two, Jeremiah Caldwell, who's had himself a day here. No question about it, Shep. He's put up some huge numbers. And they're just getting it in space now. They're making this game simple. They're getting the ball outside in space quickly and then letting their athletes make plays in one-on-one -on -one type of situation. Could be the last play of the third quarter. Belleville's had a huge third quarter. They scored 14 before the half in the second. They come out scoring 14 here in the third. One more quarter to go for their talented freshman Bryce Underwood and the Tigers. Their defense has been swarming. Their special teams has been special. And their offense has been nearly unstoppable. We head to the fourth. Belleville leads at 35-20 on Valley Sports. Need money for college? You need My Student Aid. My Student Aid is the go-to resource that helps Michigan families find money to pay for college. Plus, they'll guide you through the financial aid process and answer any questions you have. For grants, scholarships, and more, connect with My Student Aid. Helping make college affordable for everyone. Learn more at michigan.gov slash MI Student Aid. As the voice of Michigan student athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports are supposed to be played. We are responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere so that the interscholastic athletes may thrive. We believe athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe students in the stands should have fun, but not take the focus away from the game. We believe coaches should act as teachers, helping student athletes develop while still keeping high school sports in perspective. We believe that parents should always be positive role models and be supportive of their child's decisions. We believe officials commit their own time to high school sports. And respect should always be shown and given to them. The most important goal for student athletes is to enjoy high school sports while keeping a high level of respect between all those involved in the games. Enjoy the game! A team of world-renowned specialists who plan the most comprehensive course of cancer treatment. Technology so advanced it delivers the greatest precision in the world. Access to the most promising life-saving clinical trials. And a team of nurse navigators who are by your side through every step of treatment, tailored to your needs. Only at the Sparrow Herbert Herman Cancer Center. For health, for care, for life. We've got more football coming your way. Up next is the Division Five state final between Marine City and Grand Rapids Catholic Central. Our coverage begins tentatively at 4.30 right here on Valley Sports. Yeah, you got to look at this, Shep. You're going you're to see one of the outstanding players in State of Michigan and Ziegler, the deep defensive back, linebacker, receiver. They move them all around wherever they need them, heading to Notre Dame for Grand Rapids Catholic yeah, Central. Yeah, I'm sorry, thank you. Yeah, for Grand Rapids Catholic Center, I, I assume everyone's a high school football geek like me, and I forget not everyone is. <laughs> oh, you do geek it up, that's for sure. Into the third level, and all the way inside the 25, Davion Pitchford. Well, it's the first time we've called Davion's name here this afternoon, but he really is able to pop this, and just a great job. We get the WWF takedown by the nose man, <laughs> uh, on the nose man rather. That's a, that's a good block, getting penetration and then just burying the defender. And Pitchford showing that he's still got a little bit of scoots in him too. Picked up 37 on the play. Underwood will throw for the corner and knocked away. Uh, that's Schomer doing a nice job in coverage. He, you know, he did a good job, Shep. He never really lost sight of the ball. With the short field on the 20-yard line, he was able to keep one eye on the quarterback as one eye on the receiver, and then he was able to make a play on the football. Almost got an interception. You know, it's funny because even on incompletions, like that throw right there, that's a good yeah, throw and just a really good defensive play, right? Yep. Second and ten. Got a block, sidesteps his way, a flag on the play as he nestles down inside 
the five yard line. Shaw Wilson on the receiving end of that pass. Let's see what the call is. Block in the back. Offense number nine. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Yeah, it's uh, that's what happens sometimes when you have receivers and out in space that make so many moves. So yeah. You never know what direction they're yeah. going, and you're trying to make a block on the edge. And before you know it, you're blocking someone in the back because he's cut back three times and kind of jitterbugging his way out there. But it's, that, that's it's a little, little challenging for you sometimes with Billy Sims in your backfield, right? I mean, you're trying to block. No, I didn't have to block long for him. Barry was more like Billy was. He, all I had to do was like stay on for a half a second. He would boop, be by me, and then I hold my hands as I would chase him down the field. Underwood. For the corner again, just a little long. I don't know if you remember in the open, Shep, we're going back a long ways here. It was like three hours ago, it seems. <laughs> but I talked about the fact that they had to get him off the spot, him being Bryce Underwood. Right. Haven't done that. And when, obviously, when you lose to Greek, who's your best pass rusher, it be, life became a lot easier for the quarterback, Bryce Underwood. And that freshman all of a sudden looks like a junior or senior because he can stay in the pocket and deliver the ball. Fair enough. And you're right. And you brought up Alex DeGreek during our open as well. But to Underwood's credit, and you highlighted yeah. him, he has made the place. It's not his fault that they're not getting to him. You still got to make the throws, right? And, and he the has, runs. and he's run the ball well, at two. Looking for another one. He's got it. Touchdown, Deshaun Lee. They pulled away now. It's 41-20. This isn't fair. The ball gets there quickly. Lee, one-on-one -on -one coverage. You see, I think it was that Tate Pico coming late. He's also Patera 19 trying to close. And that's just getting the ball in space to athletes. Man, this is fun. What a fun team this would be to coach. Missed the extra point, but the damage already done. A lot of speed on the outside, whether it be Jalen Johnson, Deshaun Lee, Kevin Sims, Jeremiah Caldwell. Bryce Underwood's having himself a day. Your hometown sports network, Valley Sports Detroit, the heart of the fan. Everybody not built to coach. Y'all start over, because I ain't seen none of that. It's a, a lot of work. Head on the swivel. Who do you see? Who do you see? Pivot. And I like the process of just getting better. I've been a Piston fan through my whole life. And as soon as you step through the door, it's just an unbelievable feeling. Anybody that put on that red, white, and blue, I'm rooting for you. Oh, yeah! We're going to ball out till we fall out. Detroit till I die. There is no glory in practice. But without practice, there is no glory. Every single player, we got our own specialty. So we are good at one thing. I mean, we are good at all things, really. But we all got our own specialties. We all run to the ball. Coach Crowell always told us, fly to the ball, fly to the ball, rally, rally, rally. You know, we wasn't good at it in the beginning of the season, but we worked on it. And y'all going to see some of that today. Oh, it's been on full display. They're not just <laughs> flying to the ball offensively, oh. but they're flying to the ball defensively, special yeah. teams. It has been a complete performance by Belleville, yes? Yeah, that, that was very prophetic. It came true, everything he was saying here today. This has been a very impressive performance by Belleville. But, you know, I also still want to talk about Adams because they're, they're still here. They're competing. They got to the state championship game. And you look at who they defeated to get here. You take out the defending champions in West Bloomfield, you, you're a pretty good football team. And they were able to do that. And 
now in, in the regional final. Now they're here and they're trailing by three scores. Doesn't look good, but I guarantee any team coached by Tony Petrito will fight and claw and keep working to the end. They'll get the football back after the kickoff. Straight forward to the 35 yard line. Joey Shallow and the Rochester Adams offense with a lot of work to do in a very short period of time. And you're going to see a flag here for a late hit. I almost don't blame the players because it takes so long for the whistle to go that that pile's still moving. If I come flying it, when, when do we stop? You, you list your plane to the whistle. If the whistle isn't going to blow, right. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, kicking team. It's a 15-yard penalty, first down, Rochester Adams. Is that, who is that, Sims? Yeah, that, that's, Kevin Sims. that's Kevin Sims. I, I, I think part of that issue, too, Rubes, is there, there is really, I mean, if you're jumping in the pile to tackle that's one thing he's jumping in like he's on a backyard trampoline doing a flip I mean, yeah. you just don't know what's that's going on there right you know on special teams in the nfl that's what i got in the stat sheet a few times <laughs> you called it lopper last man on pile jump on pile yeah. <laughs> pressure and it continues down goes parker pico and more pressure from Aaron alexander and he has had a bright light here for Belleville today. And his future team has had a bright light today as well, Shep. Why don't you tell them? Yeah, Michigan did something that uh, they have not done under Jim Harbaugh. They just beat Ohio State and should be in the, they will be in the Big Ten Championship game. And if they win that, they'll be in the Final Four. You would guess. I don't know Pico how you could keep them out anyway. There's a gain of eight by Parker Pico. Tony Petrito's offense has been so good this year. They've scored 40 points or more five times this season, but they have been in neutral here in the second half. Yeah, and right now, Tony Petrito said it's third down and 14. He said, you make the call. What do we do in this situation? I think you're, you're going to go two by two, as you see on each side, and run some type of exchange where they're going to cross and try to hopefully somebody gets lost. They've been shut out in the second half. Pico running it. And upended as he slips his way into Belleville territory. This, to the next, 49. this next play is going to tell us if Tony Petrito is waving the white flag because if he still feels that he has any chance, any last gasp of winning this game, he's going to go for it here. Because it's fourth and nine. If you punt the ball here, you're pretty much conceding that this is over. Congratulations. Okay. But I see right now, you see Shallows coming into the game. I see him going for it. Under nine minutes remaining. Adams trailed by one at the half, 21-20. It's been a 20-point blitzkrieg for Belleville here in the second half. Adams burns timeout. We've got 8.49 remaining. Keep your home warm this winter with Family Heating and Cooling. Family is not just our name, it's the way we do business. Our family has been keeping families and businesses safe and comfortable for more than 50 years. Our estimators and technicians do not work on commission, so they won't sell you products or services you don't need or want. Call to schedule a free, no pressure quote and let Family Heating and Cooling assist you with all your heating needs. We're a tough town, and nothing, I mean nothing, can slow us down. Now more than ever, it's important to support our local businesses, our neighbors, and our friends and family. We are all connected by this beautiful community. We love this town. Atchison Ford, Belleville. 
Well, each of the last two weeks, Rochester Adams has been asked to and was able to come back to get to Ford Field. Uh, they've done it against West Bloomfield and Grand Blanc, but this is a different team that they're facing and a taller order. Fourth down and nine. They roll the pocket. Steps into a throw, and it is caught at the 31-yard line. What a grab right there. Pico with a beautiful throw to pick up 18, and he finds his sophomore wide receiver, Brady Prescorn. Well, that's what's nice having a six-foot, six wide out with that type of range, because that there was not a lot of room to put the football. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 11. The penalty will be assessed from the end of the play. First down, Adams. Nice look here. Look at him high point the ball we talked about in the first half. I don't like people catch the ball. You, and I refer to catch as letting it get in your body. I want to see you grab the ball. Prescorn at 6'6", six, six, uses his natural advantage and his height yeah. to go up and get the ball. And boy, quarterbacks like that because he gives him such a more, a bigger window to throw it to complete the pass. And Tony Petrudo, fourth and nine, goes for it. And he's rewarded with a... A nice chunk offensive play as well as an attack on the 15-yard personal foul. Well, you really like guys like that down here near the goal line. And another timeout. This one by Belleville with 8.43 remaining. Now, moving the football is one thing and trying to score plunge it in for Rochester Adams stopping the other team and getting the football back is another that's a good point Shep this offense has moved at times they, they really obviously the 20 points in the first half look good second half it's been a struggle if they can finish this drive here it makes it a two score game but still you know or eight seven and a half eight minutes left you have an opportunity You're, it's not done and, and that's why I said when it was fourth and nine at midfield that this was it Tony Petrito's rolling dice and this is it with one more last gasp. Crowell and the Tigers have talked over their defensive scheme and now on a first and ten with the ball resting at the 15 at of this. Belleville Adams goes to work all tight man press. Belly give for a gain of two. I feel like I'm beating a dead horse here, uh, but when you can play man press outside, in other words, you got him, you got him, you got him, that allows you to do whatever you want inside. You can leave six, seven in the box, you can bring pressure to your linebackers because they have no coverage. Yeah. And you can just take him away and say, you can't get open on our guys. Good pump fake. Oh, and then he runs into a brick wall. Wow. I'll tell you. As impressed we've been with the speed of the offense, that defensive line led by that man, Jay Sean Green, has been equally surprising today. Well, you got Dyson, you got Green, you have Williams. He needs to get rid of the ball. He can't because there's pressure in his face. He saw tuck and run. No, the pressure's coming up the middle as well. The dam is bursting and leaking in all areas right now in that offensive line. There's Seventh first. tackle for loss for Belleville today. Third and long. Off play action. The throw on a slant route, beautifully executed as they sneak inside the 10. Max Cyborg hauled that one in, but a flag on the play. Well, they ran that crossing route we saw earlier, kind of a rough play. They could possibly call him for a pick here, Shepard, mm -hmm. offensive pass interference. We'll get another look here, and we'll see and kind of make our own ruling. That can't be. That's not a pick play because Shallows is just working outside and the defender's working with him. They're hand fighting. Pass interference, offense number yeah, 13. That's, yeah, that's... That's a 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat third down. Yeah, we talked about, and I said this earlier, they're going to look at this. Officials, especially in a championship game, they will watch the film. They will be critiqued by the head of officials, and they're going to look at that and say, He's working outside. If it was straight up the field, I think if, if he was blocking him, but if you look, Shallows was trying to go around him to the outside, and the defender was blocking his way, so that's just hand fighting. I, I think that's a tough call against Adams. Let's take another look here. Now, see, he tries to go around him right there, and then the hands come up by the defender, unless they felt that he was trying to block him. 
during that time. Instead of running around. Yeah, and then that case said yeah, it is interference. I just don't think he was. Third and 28. That ball falls harmlessly to the turf. Pressure on Parker Pico yet again. Well, this is it. Fourth down and 28 yards to go. So I'm going to make a call that they're going to throw the ball towards number 22 in the Brady Priest corn because he's 6'6. Give, give him an opportunity. Here's the problem they're facing. Can they even give that much time? for Parker Pico to stand in the pocket to find pre-score number 22 down the field. And if I, and I'm Belleville, I'm gonna give, they're not giving any help over the top. Here it is for Adams. Against a blitz. Pico throws it and it is tapped and caught. Are you kidding me? Touchdown! Brady pre-score tipped it to himself. And the most improbable touchdown you'll see. This play is great by Priestcourt. But watch Pico. He's being pulled down. He has the arm strength of a baseball player turning a double play. But at least get the ball off and then Priestcourt does the rest, Shep. He high points and tips for himself, and then gets in the end zone. And as I said, this has been a Hail Mary drive, not just this play. <laughs> and Tony Petrito started by converting the fourth and nine. And then you see that play, the conversion, and it makes it a two-possession game with just over seven minutes. And we're going to take another look here. He goes up and over. Look at the vertical call, but it's still too high. Pre-scoring behind him, taps to himself, and kind of bobbles it, actually, and then grabs it and goes into the end zone. Oh, whole game is football's just a game of yeah. inches. You see Caldwell leap. He was about a 40-inch vert, but he's about two inches short, and pre-scoring is able to finish the play. Great, just great. I mean, this, you know, I don't know if this game's getting up. This is entertainment because this is some huge play football both ways. That's Rochester Adams' version of tap to oneself for the touchdown. 41-27. Quickly down to Brooke Fletcher. Yeah, Matt, just a few minutes ago, you could almost hear a pin drop on this Adam sidelines, but there's just this new life after that touchdown. If you guys remember, their motto is resilience. They've been in comeback situations before. They have a long way to go, but they're not going down without a fight. Yeah, a couple of scores down, 7-0-4, and an attempt at an onside kick. It is Colin Timko's version of I wish I had a do-over. In my golf game, that's called a mulligan. I would just tee up again, but he doesn't have that luxury. That's I've what happened. Your, I've seen yeah. your golf game. You need a lot of breakfast balls. A yeah, lot. that's uh, that's yeah. tough. Tim Coe, he you really try to cut the ball. Yeah. He just overcut it, and it goes about a half yard forward and spins and comes back. So Belleville's going to start with great field position. He just really misses it. Goes heavy to the right, as you can see. Yeah, he hit it with his right heel rather than the right toe area. And he wishes, again, he had that to do over again. That's great coaching right there, isn't it? Tony Petrito understanding how his player feels and wants to console him quickly. Colby Reed on the carry. Bell Collin, first possession of the day for Belleville, but it really used Bryce Underwood's legs, but primarily his arm today. Underwood, 12 for 21, five touchdown passes on the day. One shy of tying the state championship record that was set yesterday by Chelsea. Second and long. Underwood. And that is incomplete and a flag on the play. You could get an interference call. Trying to that was Jalen Johnson, the 6'175 pound sophomore wide receiver. I think coming out of a cut, 
he's grabbed or bumped, so they're going to get a pass interference call against Rochester. Pass interference, defense number three. It's a 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Results in a first down. Up to the right, you can see shallow. Can they get their feet tangled up a little bit? I think prior to that, he got his hands on Johnson as well. See a lot of flags. You know, they let him early in the game. They weren't calling anything in the passing game. They're kind of yeah. letting play. But I think there comes to a point even for an official. Okay, enough is enough. We need to start throwing the flags because you guys are stretching the limits and what you're doing defensively. 6:22 remaining in this one. Underwood from inside the 20 to Reed. Lunges forward close to the 15. Given five. The injured Rochester Adams player remains down on the field. That's Tate Pico limping off. And a chance for both coaches to talk to their squads. A timeout here in Division One with 6.06 left to go. There is no glory in practice. Without practice, there is no glory. Looking around the room, you know, I see Dot Suk here. What can you say? He was the magic man. And this is Stanley, a little octopus. Beware of octopus. These are things that we have collected by our current captain, Dylan Larkin. It is not a man cave. I designed and had Steve make for me this lamp. It's not a woman cave either. It's just our room. 41-27, Belleville leads it. Finally, Adams able to score in the second half. They were shut out until their last drive. An incredible catch. Tipping the ball to himself, Brady Prescorn on a fourth down and forever to get a little bit closer. But the onside kick was unsuccessful and actually went backwards. It's second down and five now for Bryce Underwood and Belleville. Reed plowing forward, spinning his way inside the five. It'll be first and goal for Belleville. Well, they're just having their way inside us. That, that defensive front is pretty tired right now for Rochester Adams. We you know there are a lot here, in the, especially in the second half. And those big offensive linemen of Belbo just keep coming at you. So you better you know, be ready because they're, they're not going to quit here. And if you're Adams, you got to keep playing hard. You know, Murray and Prescore and Henkley and Orsini. And you also see in that last hit a, a close shot of uh, Mohammed Murray. They have Hassan and Mohammed Murray both. Read again. Stood up and then backpedals his way in. Touchdown. Well, Kobe Reed, he's going to get in the end zone. He is stood up by Orsini, number 52, but then just spins out of the tackles, able to finish it, Shep. And as they say, I think that's is a. Uh, what do you say? That's all, folks? I yeah. think that's it right there. Yep. That's tough. And Belleville, they're going to start celebrating the streets of Belleville. And this is what head coach Jermaine Crowell wanted. You know, pull that community together, celebrate as a team, celebrate as a community. Back up by 21 now. Menards brings you the big money moment and a big money player in Bryce Underwood. He is a young player, but he's a big money player and one who plays way beyond his years, Bruce. Yeah, he's special and he's going to get better. He's one of those kids. I hope he stays in the state of Michigan so we get to watch him for three years at 
IMG doesn't come in here and scalp him from us because he has national talent as a quarterback. He has all the physical attributes you need. You can see what a touch he has on the deep passes. And that's a scene he throws obviously to a wide open uh, receiver in Jeremiah Caldwell, but he's able to get it done. And you know, in our little package here, you can see now he gets credit for a touchdown pass there, but he can also run the ball. We showed the pocket presence he had, Chef, and he was able to tuck and take off, feeling the pressure around him. And that young man's future is extremely bright. Well, it, the, really, Belleville's future is extremely bright. Lamar Fairfax and uh, Nathaniel Johnson are underclassmen, freshmen and sophomore, respectively, up front. You return Jalen Johnson as a sophomore. You return Kevin Sims as a sophomore. You return Colby Reed as a sophomore. There's plenty of weapons coming back next year for Belleville if all stays well. And yeah, they have a way of reloading. And getting players you know, out in the youth programs. And they do a good job. And that's one thing you know about Jermaine Crow while we talked that he said he doesn't coach the offense or defense, but he has a way of getting kids to come and play for him. Adams forced to return it to the 11-yard line. How good has Belleville's offense been? Well, they have scored on six of their last seven possessions. The only thing that stopped them was the halftime gun and an interview with Coach Crowell and Brooke Fletcher. Other than that, he would have stayed on the sideline and they would have kept rolling. Five fifteen remaining. Well, this is still the starting group. You have Nick Stoken at center and Finn to uh, Tobacek at guard, number 68. Rocco Rossini, 52. Andrew Wolves, 78. So Tony Petrillo staying with his guys inside and, and still a Parker Pico at quarterback. Pico rolling to his left and throwing on the run. That was a frozen rope that went incomplete. Rubes has mentioned on more than one occasion during our broadcast about Parker Pico and his ability to as an athlete and to play and he's been pretty darn good. He is a guy who is committed to Alabama to play baseball. He's a shortstop and an outfielder, five-tool guy in that sport, and actually committed his freshman year. He'll be back next season to play quarterback for Adams, but he committed his freshman year to play baseball at Alabama, where Alex Avila played, by the way. Former Tigers catcher. Pico slings it. It's caught at the 25. Nice move to get close to the 35 after the catch. A catch made by Max Cyborg. Pick up a 24. First down for Adams. Blitz from the backside and a throw on the running complete. Mercury Pico is putting some miles on those legs. And it's not running the ball down the field, it's running in the pocket, avoiding pressure. As this Belleville front defensively has got Adam, Jeremiah Warren, 55, Andre McDade, uh, Deshaun Green, Lamar Fairfax. They have kept him. We talk about getting. I threw it off his spot. Yeah. He can't find his spot. Parker right. Pico doesn't know where his spot is because he gets the ball and he has been moving a lot because of the pressure that front is applying. Well, what's interesting is you said one of the keys for Adams to get after Underwood was the pressure. Belleville has done that to Pico and Adams here today. There comes more pressure and he threw it before he wanted to. Incomplete. About to make history. Chelsea won their first state championship last night. You called a couple of games yesterday. Anybody else win their first? Nope. State Hudson history? had won before. Okay. He defeated Beal City, who also had won before. That ball was deflected at the line of scrimmage. And it'll be fourth and ten. You look at Detroit D. LaSalle, they got a title yesterday, Shep, and I do not believe that's their first by any means. 
I don't think they're up to Brother Rice or Detroit Catholic Central's level yet, but they have quite a few. Detroit Beauty Sal has really surplanted those two teams in the past five years or so. Once you say is the power coming out of the Catholic League, I yeah, think I, I would think yeah, so. They're, yeah. They're, yeah, they're the preeminent and, and, team. And actually, you can see Orchard Lake St. Mary's prior to that because George. Oh, Moore you're right. Play. Yeah. Pico on fourth down. Holding! Holding! Incomplete. Intended for his tall receiver, Brady Prescorn. And you can hear the Adams sideline holding. They were begging for a flag and didn't get it. Two more games coming up here on Valley Sports. Who are they? Well, it's Grand Rapids Catholic Central against Marine City and Detroit Martin Luther King against DeWitt. Well, it's amazing. You look at Grand Rapids Catholic Central. They lose Joe Silvari, their outstanding quarterback, early in the season, and they don't miss a beat. They're still putting up huge points on the board. And Marine City, really, the uninvited guest of the party. They <laughs> yeah, were, yeah, no so. one really gave them, well, no one, no one, the prognosticators like me, yeah. really didn't give them an opportunity to get there. And all they've done is win through the entire playoffs. So they're going to be one of those teams that gets here and going to make the most of it. And then the DeWitt King game, come on, come on. That and we talk about being the marquee game. Yeah. I think it will be if DeWitt can keep the ball in front of them defensively. They're going to be fine offensively, but King has some weapons, and they also have Dante Moore, the third-rated pocket-passing quarterback in the country. Underwood playing the wideout position, looking for a touchdown grab. Nearly hauled that one in on the throw from Kevin Sims, who is the backup quarterback. For me and Crow, I better be careful. What if Underwood likes that? He gets up and says, hey, this is he easier. Might have asked for this it. is easier than having to do the ball and have the ball in your hands every play. Maybe I want to be a wideout. Well, I think a bigger question might be for some coaches out yeah, there. Yeah, why is he up, throwing? Right. Yep. You're up 48-27. What are you doing here? Yeah, you don't want to make a mockery of it because you take your quarterback who's played really well here, and then all of a sudden you flex him out and you let a running back or a slot back throw him the ball. Yeah. You would guess you'd be just running the football to run up the clock. They will do that here. Jeremiah Beasley. I'm sure Jermaine Crowell and his staff have sensed this for a while now, but now that we're under four minutes, you can start to recognize that that dream has quickly become a reality here in 2021. Underwood with a stiff arm. Plenty of room. Touchdown. Touchdown. Well, we've seen him throw the ball. We've seen him step up in the pocket. And now you can see what this future this kid has with the speed, the awareness, goes through the, the pylon. But he's got to realize he's not in college or the NFL yet. You do not get to do that in high school. <laughs> Shush the crowd. That's a 15-yard unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Mr. Underwood. And, you know, Bryce has been really, really, I think, Shep. Now, I've seen him more than you have, but he's lived up to the billing, hasn't he? over on sportsmanlike conduct number 19 offense that penalty will be enforced 15 yards on the kickoff touchdown is good Belleville has more than doubled the most points scored against Adams this season. Give him 55. The extra points and 328. <laughs> I like
like to see, Chef, right now both these coaches start slipping some of the seniors that maybe don't start and haven't really been on the field. Give them an opportunity to step on the field so someday they can tell their kids or grandkids, hey, I had a chance to play in the state championship game at Ford Field or the Detroit Lions play. Well, NFL, yeah, NFL teams play and uh, had the opportunity to tell your kids that. That's, that's a big deal. These, are, you know, these kids will have this, whatever it is, I don't know how you scream it, you know, uh, USB pro, whatever, they're going to save this game and watch it. So let's see if we get some new names and numbers that we can call here in the last 328 of this game. Underwood responsible for six touchdowns and over 300 total yards of offense today. That big play capability has played out to perfection for Jermaine Crowell's team. Five touchdowns of 25 yards or more. Short kick to Marcus Rouse on a hop. Still on his feet and into Belleville territory. Now we're starting to see some new numbers. Let's see Felix Shorter, number 90, in that defensive end. Brody Garrett's also coming in. Nick Patera, the junior, wearing 19 in yellow is the new quarterback for Rochester Adams here in the final three and a half or so. On the ground, up the middle. Keeps it himself as we approach three minutes. And Luke Budd, number 78, also in that defensive line. Some substitution, we see 71, Bernard Harrison in that linebacker. Number 13 for Belgo, Dylan Martin in as this is the wide receiver. Also play some linebacker and mostly safety. I see 24 Robinson run out of the game. His, sub, his uh, substitution comes in as well. Pick up of six for Patera. Second down and four. He'll keep it. Tuck it up and get inside the 30. Picked up 11 for the first down. The Terra still has it in the red zone now. You get a little bit of look what the midline looks like when you can execute it, when you can get some movement inside. Patera's had three runs where he's, he's put it in the belly of the fullback, it collapsed on him, then he's able to pull it and get up the field. The problem is with the defensive tackles for Belleville today with Warren and McDade and, and Green, they were blowing up that mesh point so quickly that Parker Pico really had no room when he pulled it to go anywhere. Second and short for Nick Patera. Won't get it on that carry. At some point, we think Jermaine Crowell is going to smile because his team has done something no Belleville football team has ever done. Won a state championship. Third and one. Adams who tried to duplicate what the program did 18 years ago in the Pontiac Silverdome, coming up short to a powerhouse 
offensive juggernaut and a defense that worked out really well going side to side especially in the second half where they really stymied the Adams offensive playbook that last play Shep Demond Harrison nice job coming from his weak side linebacker flowing very well and making the play for a short game I think we're probably down to the last play of the game here hard fought game got away in the fourth quarter against Adams unbelievable season that they had but your hats off to Belleville they're the ones that are able to finish here today Inside the five, lunging for the pylon. That's a touchdown for Christian Schomer. No, nope, that's not Christian Schomer. Sorry about that. That's number two, Peyton Montour for him. That's got to be a big, big thrill for Peyton Montour. Once again, he gets outside. Good job blocking outside at the point of attack. That was number 70, Liam Beatty, doing a good job out there in space. That's an offensive lineman getting out there, pulling, get out in front of the play. Another look here. Good nice job. run. Yeah, a really good run. Way to stretch out. That's good field awareness. Good for him. I always want guys to keep trying. We always tell people, keep playing till the whistle. Peyton Montour is doing just that. Missed the extra point. 55-33. The lead is 22 for Belleville with just 19 seconds remaining. Well, this is how winning traditions and winning programs start, right, Roops? I mean, you can, you got to get there, you got to win it. You get over win, the hump. You can win regional titles, you can win district titles, but Jermaine Crowell told us, look, you want, we want to win this thing so we kind of put us on that map. But, you know, look at even at all levels, at the professional level with the Pistons. Remember back in the late 80s and early 90s, couldn't yeah. get by the Celtics. Good Until point. they could get by the Celtics, they could become champions. And once they did that, then the Bulls took over and had to get by the Pistons. So it is. It's almost right of passage. You have to keep knocking on the door before you can kick it in. It's a great point. Wings couldn't get by Edmonton back in the day, and then they became that franchise that everybody wanted to be like. Belleville and their talent. Is the envy of everybody in Division One here in 2021. Perhaps they'll look back and say, "Woulda, coulda," with Alex DeGreek being more healthy, two-year captain and their best lineman out early in this one because of a bad ankle, and he'll leave on crutches. Just 19 seconds remain before Belleville can go into full celebration mode. Squibber fielded by Sims at the 28. All the way to the 43. And Belleville can take a knee and salt it away. And then soak up the celebration that is their first ever state championship. Bryce Underwood will be out there to take that final snap. It's only appropriate, right? Yeah, the man that started the game, let him finish the game. Take a knee. Belleville makes history in 2021. They've won it all and earn the Division I state crown.
Well, this is the time you look at these two teams, you think what great years both of them had. Only one can be crowned champion. That's gonna be the Belleville Tigers. But Adams can hang their head. Don't have to hang their head, rather. They can hold it high, Chef, and be very proud of the accomplishment they got by getting here. And, uh, you know, it's it's one of those mixed emotion things for a coach as well. And even when you win this championship, you realize you never, a lot of these kids, right, they're gonna be leaving you. And you, you shared some great joy and pleasure with them, and they're gonna be gone. It's a great point, yeah. Belleville could be the start of something really big for Belleville and the start of the Bryce Underwood era. The freshman was outstanding today. Five touchdown passes, a touchdown run, and he and Belleville make history. 55-33, the final. That's going to do it for our coverage of this Division I final. Tune in to Valley Sports Detroit Plus for the next championship game. It's the Division Five matchup of Grand Rapids Catholic Central and Marine City. Now for Brooke Fletcher, our producer Brian Henry, our director Mark Stefano, and our entire Valley Sports family. I'm Matt Shepard saying so long, everybody.